이거 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 이제 단한 번의 증명만 남았습니다. k s 시즌 4 결승전. 치열했던 16강, 8강, 그리고 4강을 거쳐 살아남은 이제 최고의 자리에 오르기 위한 마지막 승부만을 남긴 두 선수를 지금 만나보겠습니다. 큰 연기에서 더욱 빛이 나는 담대함. 게임에 대한 전부적인 재능. 이 느긋한 천재가 또다시 우승을 노립니다. 디펜딩 챔피언. 프로토스의 황제 레인 정유정 이 결승에 오르기까지 13년이 걸렸습니다 진실된 눈물에서 그 간절함을 느꼈습니다 끈기라는 재능을 꽃피우고 있는 숙성된 도전자 조만의 지배자 라이트 이 최화 서로 다른 길을 걸었던 두 명의 승부사가 바로 이 무대에서 만났습니다. 케이스 시즌 4 결승전 정윤종 대 이재호, 이재호 대 정종의 경기를 여러분 박수 함께 시작합니다. 보여주고 싶어서 안 하던 스타일도 많이 연습을 했고 결과로 나와가지고 그게 너무 기분이 좋습니다. 사실 뭐 재호 형만큼 그렇게 좋았던 건 아닌 것 같아요. 왜냐하면 저는 뭐 많이 타봤던 무대고 말해도 돼요? 윤종이 너가 명훈이 이길 줄 몰랐는데 <웃음> 제 실력에 대해서 의심할 때 저는 너무 좋아요. 뭐 재능이 있는 것도 맞는 것 같아요. 그냥 대단한 선수구나. 멘탈적인 부분도 그렇고 엄청 잘하는 선수라고 생각을 하고 있었어요. 온라인이지만 정윤종 선수랑 했을 때는 제가 승이 좀 좋았거든요. 아, 저는 좀 상대방 선수가 그런 얘기를 하면은 저도 오히려 연습을 좀더 해야겠다 이런 생각을 해가지고 모바일 게임에 관심이 많은 것 같은데 집중할 수 있게 해줄게. 워낙 그동안 어, 좀 약간 집중을 못해도 잘 했어가지고 쉽게 이길 것 같아요. 개인적으로 매치 포인트가 막 그렇게 코스가 좋은 맵은 아니라고 생각해가지고 비슷한 맵이라고 생각을 해서 그냥 잘 준비해야 될것 같아요. 항상 유리한 종족들은 그렇게 얘기하더라고요. 잘 모르겠는데 <웃음> 아무래도 1경기가 제일 중요한 것 같아요 네, 결승전이니까 1경기의 승패에 따라서 좀 갈릴 것 같아요 1경기가 가장 중요하다고 생각을 하고요 1경기가 또 좋지 않은 맵이라서 저한테 불리한 맵을 먼저 하고 나면 또 기회가 편할 것 같거든요 아무래도 장점이라고 하면 은 기본기가 좋은 것 같아요 운영도 잘하고 정말 멘탈이 센것 같고요 저는 이제 한두 경기 지다 보면 약간 멘탈이 나가는 경향이 있는데 정윤정 선수는 전혀 그런 모습이 안 보이는 것 같아요 그게 제일 강점인 것 같아요 강점은 조금 약간 무난하게 하는 스타일이 아닌가 연습량은 좀 부족하지 않을까 KSL에서 좀 접전을 간다고 생각을 하면 은 쉽게 이기더라고요 또 이번 시즌 운이 좋게도 계속 4대1, 뭐 3대1 이런 식으로 스코어가 좋게 나오더라고요 제가 이기게 된다면 4대1로 이기고 싶고 간절하게 게임을 하는구나 생각을 해가지고 아마도 4대1 아니면 4대2로 제가 이길 것 같아요 재호 형이 4강에서 눈물을 흘리는 걸 봤는데 결승에서는 슬픔의 눈물을 흘리도록 하겠습니다 결승 날 보자 If you weren't hyped now I don't know what to say man That was such an incredible intro uh, I love the interview with the two players Seeing what their thoughts were before we started this match I like that final line 
uh, by rain. You and I are both cracking up about that. Uh, I saw you crying in the semifinals. It was tears of joy. But in the finals, I will make you cry tears of sorrow. Yeah, some real trash talk from Rain coming yeah. out right there. Real confidence. Yeah, yeah, that was really funny. Uh, he, he even says he feels like Light is desperate, right? Yeah. Saying, yeah, I am talented. I don't play much, but I guess I will now. I didn't focus on the game, which means I should do, I should do pretty well. <laughs> yeah. Pretty crazy Rain stuff. is really getting good at these interviews right now. Well, I'll tell you what. He's had a lot of practice not just doing these interviews for the finals, but uh, playing in them and yeah. oftentimes dominating. Rain has um, basically, for a player who's been in mostly all the tournaments in the past two or three years, he's had the most success. He is uh, an amazing player, no doubt about that. Just railing through as expected, three to one over Snow, four to one over Zero. But Light had a similar path, right? Three to one over Mine and four to one over Soma. Yeah, that's, uh, that's some quality play out of Light. This is a very exciting finals. Like obviously, Rain should be favored. He's the best Protoss in the world right now. Uh, and I mean, he's a dual champion. He's one of these guys that we're like, okay, now that Flash is taking a step back. It's kind of him and Last that we're looking towards, right? Last right. day to play here. But here's Light, someone who should have been in a finals from now. This guy is like a hero amongst hardcore Terran players. If you are an actual hardcore Terran player, Light is one of your favorites to watch, I promise you. Now, there's a chance we end up playing on every single map. Uh, we were talking before the show, Artosis, about the possible outcomes here. Mm -hmm. I think it could go any possible way. The only thing that I think is unrealistic is, is Light doing a 4-0 or 4-1. I think that would be a little bit far-fetched. But anything from a Rain 4-0ing to a Light 4-2 victory, I think is in, the, it's in the realm of reality. I think that that's a really realistic analysis you just gave. Thank you. Um, Wow, thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, no, I, I think you're dead on about the maps. It's really hard to imagine Rain not taking one or two maps. Yeah, I think. It's very hard to imagine a world where that would occur because Rain is just so, 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 so strong and so good under pressure. And, and the most well-rounded Protoss we have as of late. And we've got a lot of good Protosses today. Mm -hmm. Well, he is overall the strongest, there's no question. Uh, but you know what, Light is an amazing player. Uh, he's one of the best Terrans. He's, He's been, like, skill-wise, one of the best Terrans for, like, I don't know, 15 years. Uh, yeah. But never really made it in the individual leagues. I, I mean, he just doesn't perform well in that circumstance, whereas he's always a, a killer in pro league and things like that. Like, in practice, obviously, one of these practice bone show types where everyone knows he's fantastic. But finally making the finals here tonight. God, I'm hoping for a Terran victory. I, I would applaud a Terran victory. But I think it is fair to say this is probably a 60, maybe 65% favor for, for Rain to take this. Yeah, yeah. Um, and agree. taking a look at Rain here now, again, we have few StarCraft 1 players besides Flash that exhibit so much confidence. Mm -hmm. uh, Flash, I'm sorry, excuse me, Rain is so comfortable uh, in these interviews, in, in his on stage presence, in the booth. Uh, in his games, well, and he seems to really think that his results are just going to continue uh, on from here on out. Uh, here's a quick highlight we've got. Yeah. Um, now, again, this is Rain versus Snow. Now, Rain is uh, a player who seems to dominate PvP better than anybody dominates any matchup in StarCraft 1 uh, that, that there is right now. It's insane. Yeah, he's, he's pretty wild at the match. There's no question there. Um, I mean, he had a very nice series against Snow. It was, it was a lot of fun, actually, but... Of course, he just doesn't lose PvP, like you say. Uh, as you can see here, Rain has shown that he has possibly the scariest Dragoon Reaver Micro in PvP. And granted, I think Snow is better overall Reaver Micro, but yeah. he seems to understand the way that the Dragoons and the Reavers interact, not just how to control his, but how to punish. He also knows how to drag the game into a healthy position late game. Uh, now, PvP, I think as a positional matchup, is the most fluid in all of the StarCrafts. You can constantly rearrange, but when you get a position, you, you can really exploit that. And Rain has just shown over and over again that he can uh, shift from positional advantage to disadvantage to positional advantage again, hold that tech out of, uh, or I should say tech into a better spot. Sure. And, and we are, we're seeing that here in this series with him versus Snow. And you know, I thought Snow might take that series before it started. Snow was looking so strong, but it turned out to be otherwise when the games actually came down to it. Yeah, yeah. We, we're not at the point where another Protoss can actually fight toe-to-toe -to -toe against him. Now, Light over here, I mean, this guy has been, look at this, first finals in 13 years. Man. Think about that, right? So I guess he's been a pro uh, technically <laughs> since 2006. So. And the thing is, 
even since his debut, he was a very, very strong player. So since the birth of StarCraft 2, in the entire existence of StarCraft 2, Rain, or I'm sorry, a light has not been in a finals. More than that, 2006 yeah. is Think like about well that. before. That. Think I mean, of how that's... StarCraft 2 is regarded as an old game. This is how old the legacy of StarCraft 1 is yeah. for these players. So this is a huge moment here for Light, a lot of yeah. pressure. Whereas uh, Rain is a multi-champion in StarCraft 2, a multi-champion in StarCraft 1. I mean, he'll basically be a champion in anything he wants to do. He's already life. one of the most RTS uh, accomplished RTS players of all time. Yeah. Now, uh, this was... This game specifically, I would say, was a little bit lackluster by Hyuk, but of course that's nothing to take away from how Light plays here. Light really knows how to punish when he gets a lead. He's very concrete in his approach to each of the matchups. He likes to uh, macro route a lead. He likes to open up with a build he thinks will get him that head start and then maintain that and then uh, over time smother his opponent. Yeah, and you know what, Light, uh his, this style of his TBZ is something he's very well known for. Some people even consider him a sniper. I think that that is uh, oversimplifying how strong he is in other matchups, but probably the second best SK Terran player in the whole world to Flash. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I so look forward to our games, especially if we can get into macro play. Now, here are some uh, comments by our Korean casters. Essentially, they were saying that Rain is so dominant, he seems very calm. Uh, and composed going into these matches. Uh, he should do very well, but Light is very motivated. This is a pivotal point in his career, and he's hoping to come out uh, uh, on top today, so he might be able to surprise us. Yeah, But yeah. Uh, similar to what we were saying, and I think our views are in line with pretty much everybody that's been watching. Light's a great guy to root for. He could win, but you'd be foolish not to assume Rain is the most likely player to take this. Yeah, he's the most likely, but I think people are overrating the exact chances. If Light plays his calm, normal game, then I think that he really has a reasonable shot because he plays a pretty standard style overall. Whereas Rain, uh, like if you look at it stylistically, right? Rain and Snow are almost opposites in this matchup. Rain is a defensive monster. He's so good uh, at making sure nothing goes wrong. But generally, straight up macro play is a little bit stronger against that. That's the best so. trophy shot in all of esports, by the way. <laughs> it's a pretty good That's one. That's a really good trophy shot. It's not bad. It's not Go bad. back and check it to all the other trophy shots we've had ever in esports. That trophy looks so good with the gold around it, with the shininess. It's nice. Someone's going to take it, and everybody <laughs> else is not going to take it, Artosis. Yeah. By the way, match one is on match point. I know Rain was saying this is a pretty balanced mat for uh, all the races. Artosis yeah, was I in was, disgust when he saw I was that. In disgust. If he's <laughs> going to say that this is not a Protoss match for the map for this matchup, he may as well be a StarCraft Twozer. That's the level of what a lie that is. <laughs> That's insanity. That's insanity. Has anyone ever stopped to recall on this map? Quick question: Has anyone ever stopped to recall on this map? Tastes anyone? Wait, I'm, never. I, I was going to say probably, but no, it's never <laughs> happened. You can't stop recall here. It can't be done. All right, guys. We're ready for game one, Rain versus Light, the finals of KSL. Game one on match point in this best of seven. Dude, that, that Rubik's Cube is like the Rubik's Cube that you buy if you want people to think you're smart, but you're totally not smart. It's silver on all sides, <laughs> so I don't think it can be solved and displayed the same way as a... It's not the, the right six shapes of the blocks. Rubik's Cube. Yeah, it doesn't appear that you can turn it in every angle, even. <laughs> oh, my God. We were having some fun with that uh, during the rehearsal. So, uh, we have rain in the upper right and light in the bottom left. Now, this is a one-on-one -on -one map. Uh, there are specific cheeses you can do in a one-on-one -on -one map, especially some pretty nasty ones with Protoss. Uh, and we have a pro being sent out before, is this before the first pylon or is he gonna make this at his natural? No, oh. he's gonna send it out right away. So uh, this should That's be a, a gas steal. Yeah, yeah. And in these spots, gas steal is really good because yeah. the gas is kind of facing the outside. It's very, very difficult to stop them from doing it. And I think what he'll do probably is a gateway in main base with this. 
That's really good. It seems like... It's hard to cheese against this. All one-on-one -on -one maps in StarCraft 1 have one gas geyser that points towards the entrance and another that doesn't point towards it except for destination, in which case That's, they're both on the top. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I've always been a little bit surprised by that because... With being able to come in, and by the way, that's why this SCV comes out, is to see if he can get a, a glimpse of this ahead of time. Is he going to get it in time? He will not. Yeah, that's that's actually... This is actually uh, quite bad for life. sad, yeah, because he literally, like you said, sent that SCV out to see if this was going to happen, and maybe it came just slightly too quick. We saw his minerals were not quite there. Um, now, there's... Uh, if uh, Here's the funny thing, right? Offensive gas... Don't, don't tell other Protoss this is, but when you offensive gas, if you're also proxy gating or something, that's actually, in my opinion, what Terran wants. Really? Yeah, because you can do things like go two gateway against that, or two, two barracks, sorry, uh, and actually get out and do some damage, right? You can push out and, and kind of screw them up. Whereas in a situation like this where the gateway's in the main base, your gas is just stolen, that's it. And anything to stop range Dragoons from hitting a bunker is so late. It's so far away, and this is a flat map, right? right? So no matter what, they are just going to have range Dragoons at your door really quickly, and there's not a lot of recourse. Like, you could try to build a second barracks and rush them, but, I mean, unless you already have an SCV on the map near their base to build that second racks, it's probably not going to work. It's just it's too far of a travel distance. You can't punish anything that they've done. It's a very strong... As so far as offensive gas goes, in my opinion, this is the strongest way to do it. So you don't like the um, proxy gateway into gas, and then because you're delaying them, is it just that the, the cost of the pylon in the gateway um, adjacent to the main causes well, too much catch Well, that they're going to be time? making zealots, right? And here they're forcing you to make marines, and, they're, mm -hmm. and you're going to have a good sim city no matter what. Now, so you have a lot of options. You're going to defend against those zealots, whereas if they are uh, doing a more moderate build like this, then... You know, they have a lot more options. Like, for instance, he sees his probe was there. He sees there's no second barracks or anything. He can actually just go into a, a nexus, and you can't do anything about it, you know? Yeah. So there's it just it gives Protoss a lot more options, in my opinion, whereas the other one, you're just trying to kill someone that's not good. So I actually have not been gas-stealing at all lately. So Look I, at I, you. I know. Mr. Virtue Protoss over here. <laughs> I had to virtue signal to everybody in spots <laughs> right now. So I, I'm going to ask you this instead yeah. of trying to speculate here. Uh, what is the next step for the Protoss that you find to be most exploitative on this? I mean, do you want... Because in my head, I would think I want to tech into Reavers eventually here because there should be less tanks out. Um, yeah. it, or, or, or is it just you want to tech up and get more gateways and, and, and rely on the fact that the factories are later overall? Well, I think you want to go range Dragoons and pressure the front a little bit, and I think it's totally yeah. fine to go into Reavers. The thing is, the Terran almost has to go for Engineering Bay. Uh, yeah. And when they like pretty much have to go for engineering bay, and especially if they go siege with that, taking a third nexus is so strong. Like it, as soon as you see a turret, that third nexus needs to be going down because yeah. the turret is the least offensive thing you can see early game from Terran. If they have a turret, that's because they're not sure what you're doing, or they are sure what you're doing. Okay. Either way, they can't really attack you because it's something that flies or something that's cloaked. So in this case, we have the nexus finishing up here. Um, and it's going to be Dragoons with range coming out. There is one Zealot here to kind of mix in. It's pretty common nowadays to get one Zealot if you're against Protoss or Terran. Mm -hmm. Just because for micro purposes, it, it, it is mu a much greater complexifier overall. Um, and there's a lot more little tricks you can do with that. So we have the first factory coming down and the second factory shortly after that. Yeah. As the tech from Terran is coming out a little bit later. And yeah, this will be very interesting to see... Uh how they both bend around with this build because this is this is very much already in the freestyle range because of the opening. Uh, there's not exactly fixed builds. Uh, there's general ideas basically of, of what you do in these situations. But for instance, right now it looks like light is mostly treating this like a gasless expand, which obviously it is a gasless expand in this case. Uh, but yeah, going into the quick two factories, very likely to see them get some vulture upgrades and, and try to be on the map a bit. Uh, whereas with Rain, we're not entirely sure yet, right? He has two gates. It's the only tech I've seen. So let me pick your brain a little bit more here now. Um, oh, hold on a second. Oh, he's going to run the Zealot in here to scout. I, yeah. I absolutely love this. Yeah. Tanks a bunch of damage with the Dragoon Shields. Look at that. Pulls it back. Sees the two factories. Ooh, f four factory. And he forced a yeah. cancel there yeah. because a four factory push is, is pretty 
It's deadly. Pretty strong. Yeah, I mean, you can barrel through there and really punish. Uh, and a lot of times that's before the Protoss has been able to scout. So this Zealot sack here to come in here and just get an idea of what's going mm -hmm. on has paid off in dividends. Yeah, it's actually truly amazing. And now he's going to have range. And look at this. We have a Vulture out, right? Where's Siege Mode? If he's going for a fact, his Siege Mode is very, very late. He's going to spend a lot of time repairing this bunk. So now he's going to hit the uh, bunker. Now, for the layman, they might look at this and say, yeah, but I mean, don't the SCVs just repair? What does this do? That's a lot of SCVs not mining, and that's a lot of money going into repair. And repair is more expensive than people think it is. Yeah. Look at this. With two more Dragoons coming up, if he snipes this first siege tank, that could put him in a position well, that it is very difficult for Light this, to fight his way out of. This barracks is very intentionally positioned to interfere with the AI um, actually hitting the bunker, by the way. It's actually a, a really cool little trick because it's hard to get the... Um, Dragoon's exactly in range where you want him to be. Mm. And it doesn't look like Terran's going to overextend with his tank. No, so he knows that if he loses that tank, the game might just kind of yeah. end. Okay, uh, so Siege yeah. Boat's done here. He'll okay. get one shot. Beautiful placement. Beautiful placement. Oh, my oh God. Oh, my God. This is oh such a my good trick God. here. Okay, I don't okay. know if that was really worth it, but... Well, that was one of those moves where you pull your SCVs back, assuming they won't do that, because there's no way that should ever work, and we see that it does not work. Uh, but that was scary for a moment. Yeah, I suppose if that bunker is not remade, because a lot of times you don't put the Marines in with a push, because you want to have something there to deal with counterattacks when you are pushing. Maybe having that destroyed is more handy in the long run. I don't know. Yeah, he doesn't care that it's gone now. He has enough units. It, it is really not that impactful, and it does open up the rotation of units a bit more. But look at this. R Light is playing truly a beautiful game right now as well. Like, Rain is playing pretty flawlessly, I would say. Uh, but the fact that Rain, or, or rather Light, is so on top of it, right? He went into two factory afterwards. He was going to go four fact insta cancels, realizing that is not going to work, gets into a siege mode and now takes the third base immediately after holding that little pressure. This is exactly what he needs to do to stay in this game. If he was doing like anything else right now, I would be, you know, writing his uh, game one obituary about, <laughs> you know, Light died this day on a very even TBP map, match point. Now, and I would post that to the onion. <laughs> now, we have something pretty unique here tech-wise from Rain. Um, he went for, Reaver Tech. And this is as the third base was being made. Mm -hmm. So this is a very, very uncommon time to tech yes. into Reaver. It used to be that after the second base was done uh, and had not been attacked anymore, uh, and this was, you know, maybe even a decade ago, this was more common. It was always a surprise to have a Reaver. Sometimes even two shuttles fly in and do damage. Now this is on the third base. Uh, a late Citadel and a Forge come in here. Uh, keep in mind, guys, turrets were never made here to defend. Again, Light has basically discounted the possibility of a Reaver, and that's pretty normal, even at the highest level of play. You would mostly expect uh, mo uh, Arbiters for one, and then the second would be Carriers, although they're not as strong uh, on this map, especially in the way that this game has developed. So let's watch for this Reaver drop that comes in here. This could kill a lot of SCVs. Yeah, it really does have a lot of potential because of how late it is. Uh, as you said, and where he put the Reaver tech itself, we've been hearing scans, but I don't think that they've hit that actual location, you know? They're looking in more common areas, and that's just, you know, kind of the, the randomness of it sometimes. I also want to see if he gets shuttle speed with this. I'm always intrigued by late Reaver play. Mm. And here we go. Note he comes right in on top. And he even brings the Dragoons in for a second to try to draw the screen away. And the Reaver oh. damage is coming down. Oh. That is huge. A lot of damage done right Eight there. kills on the first Scarab. Oh, my God. That's so much damage. And now it, he has the speed as well. Look at this. Dr the Dragoons coming around the other side. No turrets in the main base. Again, these SCVs completely undefended. Another shot comes in. Will it connect? It got hooked over there on top of the... Uh, Command center. Meanwhile, the Dragoons are going to try to push in here. These siege tanks very well placed. We'll drive that away. Yeah, those are beautifully placed depots as well. That actually saved the day, those depots. Now, although Terran survives, this did delay the much more important late game tech for Protoss, Arbiters, or yeah, Carriers. Yeah. So, yes, SCVs were killed, but can Rain, um, can, he, can he manage to navigate this to the proper lead? We see the Arbiter tech is coming. Yeah. Um, Protoss does have a supply lead and is taking a fourth base, but I do wonder. I do wonder if in the long run we're going to see this 
uh, with a big Terran push if Rain might still get run over. You know, it's not just having the Arbiters out, it's having a certain number of them out that allows you options. And it's not as many options as one might think. You know, the difference between two Arbiters and one, or two Arbiters and three Arbiters, is huge. Yeah, yeah it's certainly true. I would say overall, I, I think the Reaver definitely did as much as it needed to do to kind of be worthwhile. But oh, dude. It's not. Oh, okay. He gets that one Reaver. Oh! That's a dud. Had that connected. Yeah. Oh, man. Big well, impact there. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, oh, oh three speed shuttles so that's, coming that's in that's now. That's the game plan then. All right. He wants to super uh, bombard this area. I don't know if it's going to succeed. There seems to be a pretty incredible spread of siege tanks mm -hmm. here. Yeah, the macro of light has been on point this game. But the fact that the vultures were also placed over here to cover the tanks, had those tanks been naked, or maybe just one or two turrets over them, that position would have been completely wiped out. Yeah, well, this game light, the amount that light does not want to make turrets is uh, amazing. Like. He is so anti-turret this game, it's crazy. Even after seeing Speed Show, he's like, no, this is not happening. No turrets. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, we see it is biting him in the butt just a little bit. Uh, not that a single turret's going to do too much against three Speed Shuttles. But Rain, you know, he's he's getting in there. He's mixing it up a little bit, taking that fourth base at this point. Okay, so some more Vultures come up here beginning to hit this location in the bottom right. This was a fresh expansion that was just taken. Now, hitting these probes nice. is huge. Yeah, doesn't get as many as he wanted there, but not too bad. Not too bad. He's got to do something right now. And this is actually an ideal number of vultures for the amount of damage he really did there. It wasn't an overextension. Sometimes you'll see players take eight or nine, something crazy, and set him up. But Light's a very precise player. Uh, the factory explosion has started, as is the gateway explosion here for Protoss. Yeah, and you can even see, looking at the, the top right, Light's macro is super, super on point this game. He has been killing it. He's been keeping his supply as high as he possibly can. His money is super low. Uh, Rain with a little bit more of a bank, no, no big problem there. He will get rid of that. Uh, but I think that what I'm nervous about here for Light, he does have the 2-1. His push is not quite ready. 130 supply is not a real number you would really push at in this situation, I feel like. Uh, I think yeah, you're he, needs right to, on that. he needs to do something relatively soon because the Arbiters are going to be very scary. Like I was saying, uh, and it wasn't jokingly, stopping recall on this map is insanely hard. I also like, just to go back a little bit here, the way that we saw the Reaver come out early on and he parlayed that into almost like a mini recall with massive amounts of shuttles yeah. flying around and hitting softened locations in the Terran's defenses. It, no, it's a great move. Uh, a lot of people do like to do moves like that after Reaver if you get that speed shuttle. It's not that expensive to get a few more, and it's very hard to gun them all down in time, you know? Okay, here we go. Another dive in over here, this time at the natural Reavers wow. and Zealots and Dragoons coming in here. Oh! And SCDs, they just can't be pulled in time. And it looks like there's enough shuttles. He could probably do damage and maybe even pick up and go elsewhere here on the map. And that he will. He's going now down towards the main. Just a wraith. Oh, my. <laughs> I just choked. That was an incredible. Oh, my God. There's another Reaver in here. That was an incredible mine hit that we just saw back there. Well, th this was pretty good by Rain again, I would say. Uh, you know, he didn't do that much with it, but he is maxed out. He's killing off some units. He's killing off some SCVs. He has his four bases. He has his Arbiter tech up. The one thing that Rain really does have going for him, though, he's, he hasn't been broken. He's got his 2-1. I imagine that 3-2 is on the way. He has his fourth command center. So, you know, that like if he can just live through a few more attacks and max out, he could be in good shape. Okay, oh. a pretty decent stasis there. Yeah, that's but a sick stasis. Is this actually enough to break this, though? It looks like there's yeah. not much else. I, sometimes we move a screen away and there's more tanks here. But in this case, no. Uh, absolutely 100% rain will dominate this position. And this could not have been a better stasis now that I look at it. I mean, yeah. the vessel, the tanks there. And what's great about this is not only, there it is, GG. Mm -hmm. Not only can he freeze that position, but he can push in there into the third. And I got to say, man, rain. This is the rain we're used to seeing. He bends time and space to defeat his opponent. Yeah, well, he played a he played a nice game there. The late Reaver uh, definitely caught him off guard, and then going into uh, you know the three speed shuttles, just running those around, and the the kill move with that beautiful stasis. That was that was like you could not have gotten a better stasis. I really wonder when Bisu comes back 
how he compares to Rain, because Rain looks so unbelievably good. Bisu's back, and he's very, very good right now. I've been I, watching I, him play. Yeah, he's, so. He's good, man, but I'll tell you something. Rain, I mean, some of these games, it, it, it's the next level of Protoss. We have not seen Protoss this good. It's insane. Yeah, he's, he's pretty darn good. <laughs> I mean, that certainly wasn't the way that Snow tends to play this matchup, but Rain comes in with his own style and completely and totally dismantles light. By the way, best trophy in esports right there. Quick reminder. <laughs> Someone fact check me, you won't beautiful. find a better one. Um, yeah, so uh, it, it, again, though, you know what? That, that was map one. It was a strong win from Rain. 안녕하세요. 이번에 13년 만에 첫 결승 진출하게 된 이재호입니다. 반 포기 상태였는데 이번에 운이 좋게도 이제 기회가 찾아와 가지고 기분이 굉장히 남다르고요. 20대 때 못했던 개인 리그의 결승을 밟아본다는 게참 꿈만 같습니다. A, B, C 조에 비해서는 엄청 좋다고 생각을 했고요. 제가 자신 있어 하는 저구전이 있었고. 테란 대 테란도 박지수 선수랑 있었기 때문에 8강은 갈것 같았어요. 그전 시즌들에도 좋은 상황들이 있긴 했는데 좀 제가 준비를 잘 못했던 것도 있는 것 같고 좀뭐 결과론적으로 얘기하면 준비를 잘 못했던 것 같아요. 그래서 이번에 준비할 때는 조금 더 독하게 준비를 했던 것 같고요. 이상하게 그날 따라 이제 수 싸움에서 제가 많이 밀리는 바람에 허무하게 지면 이건 더안 되겠다 싶어서 좀 끈덕지게 물고 늘어져가지고 역전을 했거든요. 그래서 그거를 이기고 나니까 이제 좀 편해졌던 것 같아요. 뭐 제동이를 떠올린 적은 한 번도 없고요. 그냥 사실 대회 때 프로토스한테 떨어진 것보다 저그한테 떨어진 게 많거든요, 최근에. 뭔가 이미지는 저그를 만나면 안질것 같은 이미지인데 저그한테 많이 떨어져서 이번 시즌은 좀 달라진 모습을 보여주고 싶어서 제가 안 하던 스타일도 많이 연습을 했고 결과로 나와가지고 그게 너무 기분이 좋습니다. 4강을 확정 지었을 때도 그런 감정이 있긴 했는데 조금 자제를 했었고 근데 결승을 확정 짓고 나니까 그 지난 10년 넘게 도전했던 그런 세월들이 떠오르면서 순식간에 여러 가지 감정이 교차를 하더라고요. 그래서 저도 모르게 약간 눈물이 많이 쏟아졌던 것 같아요. 우승까지 해야 주인공이 된다고 생각을 하고요. 우승하면 여태까지 그랬던 것처럼 조연 느낌이 날것 같아서 이번 시즌 좀 욕심을 많이 내고 있고 그만큼 준비를 더 열심히 해가지고 우승할 생각입니다. 다들 결승 진출한 거에 대해서 축하해주는 분위기고 결승전이라는 제일 큰 이벤트가 남았기 때문에 그 경기를 이기고 나야지 이제 후련할 것 같아요. 그래서 꼭 우승해가지고 개인 리그 커리어에 이제 정점을 한번 꼭 찍어보고 싶습니다. 결승까지 올라오는데 너무 오랜 시간이 걸려서 저를 응원해 주셨던 팬분들께 너무 죄송하다는 말씀 먼저 전하고 싶고요. 어, 힘든 상대지만 꼭 준비 열심히 해가지고 우승하는 모습 보여드리도록 최선을 다하겠습니다. 감사합니다. Rooting for that guy, man. Yeah, how can you not after seeing that? But again, rain. That was a very unorthodox PVT. The gas deal into very conservative expanding. I think he played it really into well. Into shuttle, yeah. Mm -hmm. Into 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 shuttle reaver, uh, and then mass shuttle to break positions. Match point is a pretty big map, and every once in a while there just is a weakness. If you have three or four shuttles, you could just hit a certain location, and yeah. that can happen way quicker than arbiter play can even. Yeah, 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 and it kind of sets up into Arbiter play quite well as well. Um, it's like you get your recalls before your first recall even happened in a lot of ways. <laughs> yeah, uh, a very small recall, but definitely you are right about that. It's a good map for that type of play anyways, with all those kind of like um, locations that you can't see over for them when they come in. They just kind right. of appear in your face, which is why it's so hard to play against stuff like that or Arbiters. We're going to go to blockchain for game number two. Yeah. I wasn't expecting to see this map as early as we're seeing right now. Yeah, the, the feeling for a long time is that this was very Protoss favored, but yeah. last showed us the way, kind of, and how it is winnable for Terran. I'll be interested to see yeah. what Light has, though. Does he have a special build, or is he going to play it uh, in the predictable way, like two base timing type push? Winnable for Terran, maybe, as you said last showed us, but winnable versus Rain, that's a whole other beast. Our two players are ready. They have joined up in the lobby. Again, this is the finals of the KSL, a best of seven. Rain winning game one on match point. Now we go to game two on blockchain.
man, that Rubik's Cube looks like what 90s movies thought the keys would look like in 2020. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, rain in the upper right, light in the upper left. Now, a couple of important features to point out on this map. Uh, for one, you can connect the four corners of the map. Um, you connect all the edges of the map, I should say, together, or you can lock them out. There's a way to mine through with minerals. Um, you can, uh, they're already open up to some level, uh, assuming you've mined out the little mineral patch that also blocks off that area. Or you can destroy geysers and lock people out. Now, uh, that can play a big role, especially in Terran versus Protoss, where um, especially yeah. for the Terran, island-esque locations are harder to take back from Protosses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very difficult. Like, dropships cost gas, and they don't move as fast as shuttles. So mm -hmm. it's it's really difficult to actually uh, get enough to do anything. And Dragoons are very versatile in that type of situation as well. So island-type play kind of favors Protoss, especially with how strong their air fleet is. Like, carriers are ridiculous on this map if you get up to a certain amount. But right. there are counterplay builds for Terran. Uh, so it seems like Terran yeah. wants to seize this game before it gets too much into the Protoss's hands in the late game, is that correct? I think that on this map, as Terran, you are looking to hit a very specific timing attack, and that's it. I think you get one yeah. awesome push on this map, and then it's over one way or the other. Okay. So, uh, I mean, obviously, sometimes we'll see people do rushes on this map. For instance, as Terran, we've seen some strong two-factory play and stuff. That's, I think that can be a little bit risky. Uh, but, uh, for instance, two base, two one timing pushes with seven factory, it was a very popular build. It was literally invented, refined by Flash uh, because of this map. Because there needed to right. be something to beat Protoss because it was so impossible. But, you know, with builds like that, it's not impossible. Like, you definitely can do it. Now, here it looks like Light is going to be going for a gasless expand. We'll see if Rain makes a Zealot or not. I think he will. Rain is now going to go up towards the top. Both these uh, players did not scout each other very early on here. Now, Gasless Expand can be punished by that proxy robo, right? Yeah, but yeah I, it can I don't, be. Yeah. I don't know if this game sets itself up for that. The proxy robo is where you uh, make a reaver out of the viewing spot of mm -hmm. the natural, and then you push in and blow the bunker up. And usually it, it, it's like a the Terran's glass jaw at that point in time. The game yeah. just about ends. Well, unfortunately for Rain, he actually... Oh, he gets up the ramp. That's huge. It's huge. Yeah. Now okay. he's going to be able to scout this. Yeah. Well, he needs to... Uh, because okay. otherwise, like, now he actually has the... Well, he didn't actually scout over to the side, yeah, which, I'm which is fine. Yeah, I'm a little bit surprised by this. Yeah. Um, but now, you know, the, the proxy reaver probably won't happen because he doesn't actually know what build order it is as of yet. The Zog will get here and figure it out, but that makes it a little bit late for that play you were mentioning. Now, the, yeah, I, that, that play is now zoned out. But uh, the Zealot's going to come in here, put a little bit of pressure on. I think when the Marines are pulled away, maybe we want... Well, no, he's going to try to push up a little bit further here. Yeah. Ooh, that micro, the uh, SCV actually moving a little bit too oh, far out of the way. Oh, wow. Yeah, there is a second Zealot in the way, and two of those Marines are very, very low. He needs to pull another SCV down. I want to see what's going on back um, at home for Protoss here. I'm very curious about the tech choice, because we don't have a Nexus coming down yet. And, um, you know, the command center's already started here. And so this bunker is going to finish in the nick of time. Ooh. All right, well, at least he has enough here that he can just push that right back. Okay, so everything seems very safe. We're, I believe we'll just see a nexus here. This seems to be uh, less than ideal right now for for Rain here. Yeah, yeah. His would, nexus is going to so. start just now. He got like one SCV. I mean, obviously the factory is going to be a little bit slower. He had to make a lot of Marines and, you know, uh, that bunker very, very early. But now, Artosis was mentioning early on that a lot of times for the Terran, this is going to come down to one very significant push because the way this map is constructed, it's easy for Protoss, even in disadvantages as the game carries on, to escape and make expansions and locations that are uh, just very difficult for the Terran to reach with an actual push. You can kill a Protoss by pushing into the main, just like you can with a Zerg, assuming they don't have gateways and other spawn locations. But already, I would say this is setting up for a pretty healthy push here from Terran. 
especially because we saw the uh, CC was not, or was set up way earlier than the Nexus was. Doesn't get much of a scout off there. Starport on the way here for Light. Yeah, I mean, I, I like the opening so far for him. I'm not sure what his real plan is with that. I think that he will probably blindly make a Wraith is my guess, uh, just because this map is so unbelievably good for Reaver for shuttle play. Yeah, I mean, overall, the I would say the opening a bit better for Light. And the fact that he gets in and sees that Robo, oh, man, that's awesome. Yeah, that is always a relief for the Terra to just scout and see what direction the game is going in. Mm -hmm. Protoss Tech, you know, if you don't know what's coming, it could be very scary. But if you spot it, nothing techs out very fast. DTs take a long time. A Robo takes a long time to even finish. Arbiters take a long time. Carriers take a long time to, to, to get to where... The tech itself is a threat. I guess DTs can be um, probably come out quicker than either stuff, but yeah. if you spot like a Citadel, then you just know. Yeah. Um, so to scout that early on is really nice here for Light. And, and right now, Light needs a victory because Rain's up 1-0. And let's not forget that, you know, if Rain gets a 2-0 lead and then that goes to a 3-0 lead, yeah. I, I don't think Light's going to be able to take this. So the next two games are extremely important. Rain yeah. already mentioned in game... I'm sorry, but before the games even started, he mentioned in an interview that um, the first game is always the most important, a best of seven. We've heard that in a from a lot of different players, and right now he has that win. So this game, again, looking decent here for Light. Not too much has happened yet, mm -hmm. but Light needs that win in this series. Oh, my God, look at that scan. Wow. He just scanned the Templar Archives. So uh, definitely Rain was planning on doing a DT drop here. Yeah. And, and I think probably into Arbiter Tech. Yeah, and by the way, the DT drop... Kind of like the uh, Reaver tech that we saw in the last game is not generally one of the better techs to go for off two bases because it slows everything else down. But if you see it, it's great. Now this, ooh, good decision to turn around with that dropship. Yeah, well, DT drop has gained a little bit of popularity back lately just because it's so bad that no one did it for a long time. And then, right. you know, that can make something good again. Uh, but a great scan. Look at this. He's actually maneuvering in his dropship. Gets two speed vultures in here. Let's see how many probes he can get. He already got one. Two probes. Oh, oh beautiful building so placement. Good. See, this is part of the reason why Rain is so strong. He literally only needed to put down one building to make it vulture-proof. Most Protosses right now would be down seven probes. Yeah, I almost <laughs> wonder if the building placement is very intentional here. Yes, it is. He does, I see him do that a lot, that exact thing where he has one building hole, and yeah. he just makes it as soon as he sees a drop. Because that blocks so perfectly, and that's exactly where Terran want to go. They want to get up there and then plant mines. And then, you know, the observers are slower. And uh, oh, hold on a second. Is he going to skip out of. Uh, is that an Arbiter Terminal? Tribunal? Yeah. Okay. Got it. So that is a really smart play. He's going to go into Arbiters here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he's going to skip the DT drop since it was already scouted. You know, uh, normally carriers are considered a little bit stronger in this map. But that's kind of the funny part of the metagame of it is that these like uh, two base pushes are very strong against Carrier. And what's the counter to them? It's actually Arbiter plus High Templar. Right. So Psy Storm and, and uh, Stasis. Stasis are fantastic against them. So Rain is going to play more of a ground-based army here. Obviously, Arbiters are still super strong on the map. But it's uh, it's not like Carriers where if they get to a certain amount, you just die. You know? Yeah, Carriers. Like you get four Carriers on this map and they're not in your natural. Okay, that's yeah. it. <laughs> you know? No, it, it, the carries are especially strong, especially in these spots right here. So a nice snipe here. Takes out the one observer. And quite a few factories going up right now. And so this is the two-base setup. Now, it's inevitable that the Terran's going to try to take a two-base push here. Oh, almost gets the block off. But I don't think this is going to do much more here. This is just Terran trying to control the empty space here so that Protoss can't just take another expansion too easily. Yeah, it's yeah it looks crazy. like he cleans it up. He's cleaned up all the drops really, really well so far. And let's see, like, I don't think that he's planning on going for any command centers or anything. Like, it's, no, he's on six so. factory right now. Sometimes with the starport, you can go up to five factory before your third command center. But when you see the six here, this is pretty clearly going to be a big push. When this push comes out, if Terran can get in front of the pylon wall and siege up, Protoss is going to have a lot of problems. If you just siege up in the natural, um, the ramp here is very small to get out of uh, for the Protoss. And if you if you cage them in, 
and yeah. begin to hammer them with artillery. It's really hard to deal with. This is, it's funny, because the map itself is large, but the passageways to walk down are actually very, very small. So ground-based armies, uh, if it's ground-based armies fighting each other in this map, generally Terran has an advantage. So he's going to bring this push right out. And I mean, looking at the supplies and the number of production structures, I feel like this is pretty good for light. I think he can actually maybe do it here. It's going to come down a lot to tactics here from Rain. Okay, light's coming down now. Again, these bridges, another interference here as far as fluidity with your ground army. Uh, he's got a nice setup. Supplies are actually a little bit frighteningly close here considering the yeah. position that Terran's in. Yeah. No, Again. These are, this is good for Terran in this type of situation, but when Stasis comes up, that's going to be a big moment. When Speed finishes for the Zealots, that's a big moment. Notice how Rain has a group down at the bottom. Uh, he's trying to do something here tactically, find units that are you know, poorly positioned, pick something off, because he needs to do that. This push is just so deadly. Okay, now he does not have enough energy here for Stasis just yet. Uh, although Rain wants to try to dive in, which I think is ill-advised, especially with all the Zealots getting destroyed. Mm -hmm. Basically taking out a tank or two, but I mean, this is going to be really hard for Rain, man. I think the, the, it might have enough for uh, Stasis oh, now. I think he's actually going to break through. Look at that. The Zalts are dancing on each other. Oh, okay, they stop. They stop. Uh, he's got to lay some mines down here, though. Okay, more and more Vultures ready. coming up. These four uh, oh, tanks that would here be would huge. be ideal to hit. Oh, if he gets those four tanks, I think he can just break it immediately. He's doing a great job using the Arbiter at the right distance to try to get a Zealot in mm -hmm. to soak up mine hits. Now, yeah. Rain has to be insanely patient here. Oh, my God. If he can cast he's this. He's going to get that Stasis. Right? I mean... There's no vessel out, right? This no, is there's no vessel. With this. Vesselless push. Yeah. Ooh, that mine! It got like five z vultures or something. Very nice mine. There's a now, lot though. He needs to spread those tanks just a the, little bit more. The insane patience here by Rain, by the way, not pulling the trigger yet. Yeah, He's by Light keeping, as well. Yeah, Light is not panicking. He's not moving forward too quickly. He's once again going to try to send one more zealot through. I think. Oh. He's, I guess actually the like, turrets are done. Is he rallying done. any new tanks, or is he only making vultures? Like, we're only on six tanks in this I, push. I'm a little bit worried now because he might have zoned himself out of success with this push. Protoss is not going to attack until he absolutely has to. Look at this. I love it. One Zealot with the Dragoons in the control group. Mm -hmm. To run in there with the mines. Yeah. Everything else is there shots. to hit, hit uh, uh, the mines that we're seeing here. All right, it looks like he's going to start to jump forward here a little bit. Is that bit. the second Arbiter? Where's the first one? Yeah, the oh, first, first one's the down. Okay, got it. He does have My that bad. third base up as well. Reigns macro really hitting it this game. Let's see, he's trying to clear some of those mines. Finally, a, a Dude, vessel he's does so come out. good at doing this. Ooh, this could yeah. be kind of a cute move here. I'm not sure how many units are in the in the third base. I don't think I don't, any are. I don't think that's. I don't think. I think it's a misclick on the mini map there. Look at this. He's purposely trying to push that back right now because he knows that yeah. any drop in there could be deadly. Oh, I, I would love to see him just drop a couple vultures I, off in there. Yeah, he's going to scramble to make cannons there. Man, had he dropped right then, assuming that was full of oh vultures? Oh, my God. Do you see this? Do you see this? What, 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 what? Because Rain is taking so long to do anything, he actually thinks it's a recall, but it's it's truly not. Yeah. No, no. This or is maybe a, it is. There, is that a – do we see an Arbiter flying no, around? There's not. No, I, I no. think there is. 12 o'clock, there's nothing there. Look, there it is. Oh, I'm sorry. It's actually down here at the bottom. Yeah, okay. So he actually did read that correctly because it was, like, taking so long. Oh, no. He is going to recall right oh, there. That's not a very good recall. Shoddy recall here. Yeah. No, he's going to wreck that. Look at that. You know, recall can win you the game, but it can also lose you the game. And uh, this was a case where the recall was into the jaws of the Terran army. Yeah, there was a recall there, and one of the Arbiters took a ton of damage. I believe the high energy Arbiter with more health was left over there, or is it coming back? I guess it's coming back now. Well, now he can reinforce his push, and look at how close those supplies are. I mean, that's that's very good here for uh, for light for Lucifer Morning S. <laughs> well, the second recall though. Now there's not much energy at all. I think there's literally none here for spells. Oh my God, he's actually hitting the army that's about to get recalled. Okay, here we go. Now there are. Uh, Okay, that is an insanely large recall. Yeah, that's a big one. But great scanning. The mines have some good connections there as well. And I think he's going to hold no, that pretty well. I, I think Rain is not going to make it this time around. And G -G. there it is. All right. GG. 
have well, ourselves light. a series. Hell yes, 1-1. One, one. And on the map, traditionally viewed as Protoss' favorite, Light elects to take that after his first loss and crushes through against Rain. Yeah. The most dominant player in the last two years of StarCraft 1. You know what's funny is you were saying those four siege tanks, he's going to stasis that. He almost has stasis energy, Dude, and then you didn't do it. I think had he stasis that, we would have already been in game three well, right he now. Well, he went recall first, clearly. Right, so is that what you think it is? Yeah. I almost feel like hundred no percent because no matter he could have broken that. It would seem to me like no matter what, if you're gonna be two base pushed, you can't capitalize on recall then. Uh, well, yeah, it hits before the recall, right? But yeah. Um, well, this was a different two base push too because he went quick starport and the drops didn't do much, so it was actually slightly weaker than most two base pushes. Yeah, I guess um, he didn't have the vessel out and some other stuff. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, no, I, I totally see what you're saying because the two base push actually wrecks quick recall right. if it's streamlined. But anyways, this was really well played on both sides, I feel like. Yes, there was a lot more to that game than just two base powering, that's for sure. By the way, the, the immediate decision to back up and plant the mines, mm -hmm. um, I think the biggest mistake there uh, goes to rain with the recall on top of the tanks and vultures at the natural. That was a poor recall. That, you know, you, it, it, sometimes it's better to just not recall. Um, no decision to go for shuttles, reavers, shuttle speed, anything like that. Just something to, to point out. Um, sometimes I, shuttle play is another way to try to seize dominance on that map. Now, this starting, I, I'm actually glad they're showing this because the start's very important. The Zealots did virtually nothing. The Terran got the expansion up far before, uh, before the Protoss does, which matters a lot if you're both going to two-base power. Uh, and even though Rain had stellar defense over here, really not um, you know much else other than the decisions in the tech tree. Here comes that push now. Yeah, this push is so scary. Like, look how many vultures are in there. The look. Zolts clump up. They take all that siege tank splash damage. Man, just wrecking right through. But yeah, now this was a bad recall. That was like, I think that obviously the problem here is you had vultures on both sides. So even though you can kill yeah. the tanks rather quickly, it's like, well, I mean, these, the Vulture, it's not like Vultures can't kill Dragoons. You know, that's actually a spot <laughs> you don't even recall. And normally we see recalls here in the main much later on. But at this point in time, it's funny, the mines and just the two tanks here, the way this was positioned and the decision making of the AI on where they were attacking here and Rain not resetting that meant that this main recall was completely mopped up. And then the push from Light came through yeah. and crushed. Where, where Light sieged and how he got the Vultures in front there, that was beautiful. We're going to go to a break. When we come back, Game 3 of the KSL Finals, Rain versus Light. All right, everybody, we're back. We're getting ready for game three. Right now in the finals of KSL, we are tied up 1-1. Light winning with a very strong two-base push against Rain's attempted response, which was a quick Arbiter. Uh, was not able to use the Arbiter abilities effectively to win that game. Yeah, yeah, he teched up very, very quickly there, and maybe too quickly. Uh, yeah. But yeah, a good, solid play there from Light. And I would say game one was a pretty good game as well, so. I, I like his chances, seriously. He's showing that he can go toe-to-toe -to -toe macro wise with Rain. And, you know, that's kind of, I guess, what the worry was, is is he going to be able to actually deliver on his regular style? And it looks like he is. I just wonder what the rest of the games are going to look like, because blockchain's a pretty specific map, right? Terran's forced mm -hmm. a two-base push on that map, and there's a lot of different ways to two-base push on that, and I think Light elected to do a pretty intelligent one. Rain didn't quite read exactly what was coming. Upgraded, as you were saying, recall before stasis, where stasis generally for a push that fast, that's usually what you want to do. Um, in game one, we saw Rain pretty well prepared doing a gas deal, a very punishing move on a one-on-one -on -one map. And from there, he managed to switch into an unusual reaver tech on three bases, focus on reaver drops, and then mass shuttle drops. And basically whittle the Terran down until there really wasn't a whole lot that Terran could do to stop a really crushing push from coming through. 
Yeah, it, it was a, a very good kill move too. That stasis was amazing. He yeah. just he nailed it. Uh, once Light takes that high ground area, then uh, most of the rest of that game turns into trying to stop recall. Right. And it becomes, uh, you know, if you stop like the first recall, for instance, you're you're just about there as Terran because you're controlling half the map from that high ground. So Rain really nailed him there. And of course, we already kind of talked about that game too. So. Uh, quite a close series so far. I do want to mention, because this is so cool and interesting to me, map three is Overwatch. Okay, yeah. so we're kind of There's... getting the difficult maps all out of the way for Terran in the beginning. So, like, I would say going into Overwatch, if Light wins this map, he's going to take home the championship. Wow, okay. Because you the think maps he'll just have get... the momentum on his side then? We, we and... are getting towards more Terran maps after Overwatch, right? Okay. We're going to get into Circuit Breakers. We're going to get into Fighting Spirit, which is actually a terrible Protoss map, but no one seems to know it, especially pro gamers. Um, yeah, I think Fighting Spirit's actually pretty tricky. The third base, if, if the Terran just gets it, then it can be pretty annoying for the Protoss from there on out. It can? Yes, it can be. Yes. <laughs> this guy. Yes, the it propaganda can be. levels today of How Protoss dare players. You? <laughs> Between you and Rain. With, yeah. With your propaganda match <laughs> points, a fine map, Fighting Spirit, Terran map. I, I can't hear this stuff anymore. Do you think Fighting Spirit I'm is just mute a straight you. up? That's it. <laughs> you think Fighting Spirit's a straight up Protoss map? Oh, absolutely, 100%. Uh, but at least you can max out there as Terran. So we'll just do three base play. You have a puncher's uh, yeah, chance yeah, as a Terran yeah. player. Uh, we're going to go to a quick interview, then we're going to start our games. Oh, uh, we 네, 우승했었는데 이번에도 결승에 올라와 가지고 좀안 믿기는 것 같고 좀 얼떨떨한 것 같아요. 네, 그래도 기록을 달성하니까 좋기는 하더라고요. 아, 우선 KSL은 좀 약간 다전제이기도 하고 일단 뭐한 경기 한 경기마다 조금 부담이 덜하고 조금 편하기도 하고 기본기 위주로 하다 보니까 성적이 좋은 것 같아요. 어, 다른 선수들이 저보다 시드가 낮기 때문에 빨리 선택을 하더라고요. 다른 시드자가 제가 좀 보고 있다가 타이밍을 봤는데 그나마 비조가 제일 할 만하다고 생각을 해가지고 비조를 들어가게 됐는데 사실 재우기 형이랑은 하기가 싫었어요 제가 그래도 피피전은 항상 변수가 있다고 생각을 해가지고 다른 선수들이랑 하고 싶었는데 조조에서 그래도 재우기 형한테 지더라도 2위로라도 올라갈 자신이 있었기 때문에 들어가게 된것 같아요 네, 7전 4선 승에서 저그 이기기는 되게 어렵다고 생각을 해요 그리고 명훈 형이 워낙 연습 때 투시전을 잘하는 선수여가지고 힘들 거라고 생각은 했었는데 어, 첫 경기에서 제가 지는 빌드인데도 제가 이겼잖아요. 명훈 형의 움직임 같은 걸 보고 앞으로 그렇게 딱 기량이 발휘 되지는 않는구나 생각을 했었어요. 그때부터 좀 괜찮다고 생각을 했었는데 두 번째 경기 이기고 나서 거의 결승에 올라갔다고 생각을 했었어요. 뭐 이긴 순간 그렇게 기쁘진 않았는데 집에서 이제 공공이 생각해 보니까 아 내가 그래도 되게 잘했구나라고 좀 약간 뿌듯했던 것 같아요. 그렇게 노력하는 아니라고 생각을 해요 저도 그 전에 제가 그 연습을 하면서 싸웠던 게 있기 때문에 지금 잘 되는 것 같아요 꾸준하다는 거를 좀 증명할 수 있는 기준인 것 같아요 팬들이 항상 기대해 주시고 또 올라가면 엄청 좋아해 주시고 제가 지금 대회 나오는 그 동기 부여가 제일 되는 것 같아요 팬들 때문에 뭐 상급 이런 것보다 이게 오히려 더큰 힘이 되는 것 같아서 그래서 이 자리까지 올수 있었던 것 같아요 I enjoyed that interview. Really cool to see Rain's thoughts coming into this. Again, best trophy in all of esports. Prove me wrong. <laughs> That's actually a shot of our trophy right now. It looks like high end CGI. It's not. I know. I know. We're going. Uh, into Overwatch. Again, a one-on-one -on -one map. There are cheeses you can do in one-on-one. -on -one. Sure. I don't know if we're going to have it this time around. If Terran spawns at the bottom, we could have another gas deal. Uh, yeah. Expect anything. Yeah, and, you know, I think overall it is just a pretty good uh, PVT map. It's really hard to actually attack Protoss. There's a lot of builds that just don't work here. Uh, like, two factory, for instance, even two base pushes are very, very difficult to work because of all the different paths and uphill locations. Yeah, lots of bridges that bottleneck yeah, yeah. the push. So it's it's kind of a map that you, if, if Protoss wants to, it'll go to late game. We might you know? see a hidden factory on this map. Yeah, that we, is possible. we saw that from Sharp, right? And that yeah. was, it was good. Like, it, it, no, wait, it was, was it Sharp or Sorry that did it? I'm trying to remember. Anyways, Might one have been of them. Sorry, actually. Yeah, maybe, maybe it was Sorry. And it, but it was, it was a cool build and it, it, it worked, but a lot, a lot uh, of Protosses like to put pressure that. early on on this map, and so yeah. sometimes that can be punished. 
Well, this is the one guy that probably will back up his goons, you know? Well, that's how he lost uh, before to Flash, similar fashion. So you'd have to imagine he's made those adjustments. Our players are now ready. This is Rain versus Light. Game number three right now, both players tied up 1-1 in the KSL Finals. Our map for game three will be on Overwatch. Damn. Yes, indeed, it will be on damn, Overwatch. Damn, I thought I was timing it up with the Korean casters yeah. correctly. It leaves us with... Damn, damn, damn. <laughs> Oh, my. Uh, well, I don't know. I, I feel like, again, this is a must win for Rain because the maps are going to get friendlier and friendlier to the Terran aspect. What is the Korean caster reading a book out loud up there? What's going on, man? <laughs> Let's start this game. Rain versus Light, Act 2, go. Okay, Protoss in the bottom and Terran in the top. Yeah, better spots for light, like you were talking about. Uh, it's a little bit harder to offensive gas there. It's easier to defend Zala rushes and whatnot as well. It is sold out in our studio here in it's the Nexon Arena. Here. Yeah. I don't think they can get more people in here, Artosis. No, probably not. Maybe they can, though. Maybe I shouldn't say that. I don't I don't know what they're doing well, the front I mean, here, but it seems like all the, all the tickets were sold out. Maybe they're standing room only here. So, uh, going into this game here, I think it's very important we see what types of builds are going to be opened with. Mm -hmm. Is Rain go going to elect for anything uh, engineered around a one-on-one -on -one map? Or is it going to be just kind of a macro game? I mean, Protoss can go for macro play on this map as well. Oh, absolutely. I actually think that that's much better than cheesing on the map. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, obviously it can be hard to deal with cheese and whatnot, but... This is a map where going into either Arbiters or Carriers, if you can do it pretty safely, they're both very, very strong options. Again, it's hard for Terran to kill you. It's uh, A lot of times it feels more like you almost have to do a suffocating play as Terran, right? And just kind of play the really long game and deny expansions for long enough that eventually you just win. Because it is hard to outmaneuver. You know, Protoss armies will go over bridges a lot quicker and a lot more efficiently than, than Terran armies. You know, they split up a little bit better as well, so... You can be counterattacked rather easily. Uh, yeah, Terran armies tend to be stronger if they've set up a position. Yeah. Uh, where Protoss armies are better if both uh, both groups are more fluid. That's when Protoss can come in and do damage and then run away. Yeah, exactly. Let's hit run tactics. Now, uh, Rain, I mean Light, sorry, is going for a gasless expansion once again, and Rain is not scouting. So I would say that that's actually pretty darn good for light right now. Yeah, there's a he is few his own. builds that Protoss can do. Um, and we'll have to see when Protoss actually expands. There are some builds where the, the Protoss actually looks around the map with a Dragoon. Yeah. Like, that's the first scout. And um, that does eliminate a lot of possibilities to just come in here and punish a command center first. Uh, luckily for Rainy, did make that Zealot first, of course, with light seeing it. It's not as big an issue. But, you know, you want to make the Zealot first against this build. Just force out more Marines in, in the bunker more quickly and things like yeah, that. Yeah, it's a little bit like pressuring a Zerg almost. Yes, absolutely. You want them to, to really invest in defending. Because if you're going for a Dragoon, Terran can so easily set up uh, the defenses ahead of time against the Dragoon. And the Dragoon doesn't get to really kill anything, only damage things. Now, this is going to be Rain's first scout. Of course, he'll know exactly what's going on the second he gets there. This might be a Nexus on 21. Look at the bra bravery here of our Terran player coming out here to meet the Zealot. Get that one out. They're going to say the birds or something. Look, Look at, at the, the birds, birds here. Tasteless. <laughs> the only birds here are my middle fingers at that Zealot. <laughs> uh, coming Whoa. here, gets one. Uh, Marine. Oh, good escape. And it looks like the Zealot will barely get away. 
Damn, you can tell how hard he practiced for this. That was exactly precise, how he fought it with two Marines. Yeah. By the way, I was wrong. It's not Nexus on 21. Uh, there might be some more Dragoon pressure, but thematically, there's some, some of the same things that happened in game uh, two are happening here in game three. The Terran gets the expand before the Protoss. And generally speaking in this matchup for the second base, you want to get your base up ahead before theirs or with theirs, depending, yeah. on, what, depending on what race you are. Um, so this is not ideal for Rain. That doesn't mean Rain's at a huge disadvantage, but it's just something to take note of. And he goes directly into robotics, which is quite good uh, on this map. Would really like to see some Reaver play out of him. I think it transitions into everything very, very well. You get some very nice harassment done. Speed shuttles are good on this map. There's all sorts of great reasons to go for it. Yeah, if Terran gets this lead early on, a lot of times it's really, really tempting to try to get uh, the rest of your tech up right away. And if you get too greedy, then a Reaver play can punish that. Now, uh, Reaver has been fairly commonplace in the meta in, in PVT. Mm -hmm. Something like half the games have Reavers in them. <laughs> You know, it's, it's a maybe pretty 60 high amount. Even. They've fallen, it's fallen off just a little bit lately, but not not dramatically. It's not like it's gone or anything. It's yeah, not it phased out. Every day. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it, look, right now, Light, he's just doing very, very standard old school uh, gas, gasless expand stuff, two factory, getting into uh, an, an engineering bay as well. I just can't even speak. What's going on? <laughs> It's not light that's nervous tonight, it's me, Tasis. I know. <laughs> I'm just like, oh my god, are we going to have a non-last, non-flash uh, Terran win a championship? Uh, When's the last time that and happened? Engineering Bay. Yeah. C can you name the last Terran champion that was not flash or last? Well, Artosis, you're really picking it how you want it to be, huh? <laughs> Tasis, can you name a Terran champion that wasn't the two best Terrans in the world? Yeah. I certainly yeah. can't. Yeah. Wow, Artosis, you raise an excellent point. Um, right? <laughs> Um, <laughs> I like how you say I'm really making it how I want it to be. <laughs> how I want it to be? No, Tasos. I want and what about the fourth best Terran? Terran. I mean, where is he at, huh? I mean, come on. Oh, no, the fourth best Terran? <laughs> Kidding me. Now, uh, see the Dragoons coming here and hitting this bunker. Again, it forces the SCVs to repair. And we have the two factories up. Tanks are going to be coming out pretty steadily. The tanks will be here to drive away the Dragoons. We really want to watch for the main, though, and see how many <laughs> turrets and where they're placed for if the Reaver drop is going to do much damage. Yeah, it's, will he make an actual turret ring? Occasionally what you'll see in a situation like this is just the turret at the front for DTs and then maybe like a turret at the main minerals. Yeah. And that's kind of your hedging bet turret. I feel like you should always be making three turrets, though, at least. One yeah, the, you might be right about that. One towards the middle of your base as well. Otherwise, there's just too much mobility of a shuttle. So, uh, is this one Reaver or two? It's one, one right? Yeah. Because Protoss doesn't have enough of anything else for there to be a second Reaver out already. So, uh, this Reaver is going to be making an immediate rush, I think, towards the main, but it looks almost as if it's pointed towards the natural, unless we see an immediate turn in its direction. Mm -hmm. Now, it looks like he wants to do a two-factory pressure here. Uh, but, re like, this is, ooh, this is scary. Like, Rain is getting ready to pounce on this. Look at this. Yeah, he has the Reaver for the flank. The Dragoon's coming down. Of course, the three tanks can take on the three goons. And oh, wow. Great drop here. I love this. Look at this. Oh! 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 Takes out that tank. Can he get another shot off on this one? Oh, if the he tank hits is that. turning away. Oh, you don't want to lose that tank. Oh, oh my, my God. God. I great can't play. believe that tank is alive. That was just incredible. Looks like the Reaver is going to flirt with the idea of dropping here and then not do so. Yeah, I think it took a few too many tank hits. I think if you drop there, yeah. you get one scarab off and it dies, and that's not really worth right There's now. There's a whole art to dropping the Reaver. I'm actually not sure about this, but does the Reaver drop out the same direction as the shuttle's pointed, or does it drop out the same direction it was pointed when it, you picked it up? I, I actually need to check no this. no idea. Because, you know, if the Reaver I drops... I never even thought of that in my whole life. You just broke my brain. I just thought Holy that here. Holy crap! Because... It probably is one of those. It's got to be one of those, not. too. So I'm, I'm going to go It's pointing this wherever out. the Protoss wants it to point. <laughs> <laughs> there's, a, there's a little uh, digit pad inside the shuttle. You just hit one of these directions <laughs> yeah. in there. and You it'll use the arrow it. keys. Yeah. <laughs> God. Bottom right, just hold both those keys and it'll you be down there. Use your Sega Genesis controller because they know every Protoss has one of those. <laughs> That's how they play the race. They use a joystick. <laughs> so I was just thinking that because, you know, if the Reaver drops and it's pointed away, it takes much longer 
yeah, for the uh, yeah. shot to fire. It does have to wiggle around. Well, so. swings around more like, but yeah. That's a very interesting thing, actually. Now I'm really wondering about yeah. that. I uh, bet you that almost no one knows that, but someone will test and then tweet at us and act like and, they already knew. And several other people will act like, like I no, can't I believe these knew. guys didn't like, know no, that. Didn't, no, Why are they even allowed to cast us if they don't know what direction the reaver comes out when yeah. it drops? Wow, that That's scan. That's a good spot. Woo! That is a good, good, you good You cannot scan. ask for a better scan than that. No, and, you uh, cannot, sir. So this is six gate. We don't have a citadel, right? You couldn't if you're getting carriers this fast. Yeah, no, not yeah. You normally get citadel after the carriers start, but yeah, this is like what a good situation right now for Light to have scouted that. Now the thing is, Rain wants to slow him down with the Reavers on high grounds. Like, right. if he can slow down taking that third base, that is really, really crucial because you want to get that up and running as like as quickly as possible. Is he abandoning carrier attack here? No, I don't think so. I think he's he'll made just do six it. gates and he's taking a third. I don't know how many things you can do at once with Protoss, but oh yeah, no, you can do even more than that. <laughs> <laughs> you fly around with Reavers and deny yeah. third bases while doing all that tasteless. God, oh. you probably he probably has a forge going too. Just yeah, FYI. he's probably got two of them going on here. <laughs> if he has two yeah. forges, I'm hanging up my mouse. And he's keyboard. getting observer speed as we speak too. I mean, this guy's doing everything <laughs> at once. It's insane. Okay, nice connection. Snipes the yeah. tank. He edges it back a little bit. Now, Very see, hard to leapfrog these oof. tanks forward. Oh! This is exactly what you want to be doing here is rain. Exactly what you want to do. Slow that down as much as is possible. Picking off any units right now is really awesome. We're just not going to look at those Stargates. They want to keep you in I suspense. know, I know. I, I, really I know you're it. sitting there wondering if well, can he support all that. Air, yes, he can. Air attack <laughs> is coming here, so I think he actually absolutely is getting it. Like, no, that's it seems like I, cases. <laughs> It seems like um, there's just no easy way <laughs> to switch tech from carrier if you just get scanned like that. Oh! Oh, yeah. No, if you're making carriers, you're making them. And that's that. Well, well, does he have enough to bust this? You know, there were Goliaths made very actually, early on. I didn't see a was lot the of rally, vultures. Was the rally reset? Does he have units that is natural? Because if he know. has a bunch of units that is natural, this might break him. Ooh, oh, God, he has four tank. tanks here only. Where are his other units? They're at his natural, aren't they? So now he's lost three tanks. I wish our observer would go moves. to the natural or no, go to the carriers. Or just he's not going to go anywhere we want to see. There it is. Yeah, too many see. tanks over there. It's a lot of units sitting there. Uh, I don't want to be too nitpicky here on light, but he does have a lot of idle SCVs at the natural. It's not the, it's not unforgivable, but it is a little bit worrisome. Uh-oh. It's not unforgivable, but he is going to have to say sorry. Oh my god. It's just Light's unit's kind of out of position here. Uh, he's able to fish some of these tanks forward here. Yeah, he's picked off like six tanks. Seven. It's funny six how Rain seven. makes this look so easy. You know, it's like the Dragoons just come in, he knows where the tanks are, he hits them, he runs back out. Even the drop with the Zealot on the low ground and then it runs up onto the yeah, high ground yeah, and kills the, the tank and he doesn't drop the Reaver and mm -hmm. I'm kind of shrugging. Yeah. Yeah. Not sure what I mean, I'm supposed he, to expect next he's year. He's doing it well. I just I think that light is leaving but way too many units at his Artie, natural. Artie, let's take a look at the upper right hand side of the screen. What do you think about all that gas and minerals? This is absolutely not the way this game's this supposed to look. This replay is bugged. Yeah, this is a bugged replay. It looks like a bugged <laughs> replay right now. Yeah, it does. I would have already closed this out and said there's no way. There's that no is way a that hell they're both a lot of money. Both these players right now are cursing themselves in the booth. Saying, what is I'm happening? Two so K minerals? What is going on? I don't know. What is he doing aside from nothing? He's not making facts. He can afford seven factories right now. I'm not even making that up. Now eight factories he can afford. Well, what is going even on? Even at the highest level, we have games like this. But you know, on Rain's side too, this is so many minerals. You could have taken a fourth base at this point in time. Had more gates. I mean, Dude, you, seriously, you so much what's, you could have. What am I seeing? This is broken. It's actually something's wrong here. What if we found out there was a new bug? There has this, to be. This, this there is no way that these two pro gamers in the finals of KSL have this type of mineral count. Nothing's moving. Yeah, well, not only that, but remember the skirmish over there with those three? Are we experiencing a new bug in the game? I'm actually... I Yeah, this can't... I think that maybe wait, the observer wait, wait, wait. desynced. Hold on a second. With the game? Like, this, this can't All right, hold be on. real. I'm, I'm going to go to the Korean stream. Uh, no, 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 this is the same observer for us, right? We don't have an observer, right? No, this, we this, don't have our own this doesn't look right at all. No, it doesn't. And also, nothing's happening. 
No, the game nothing. is stagnated. Okay. It's broken. We are in. It's actually broken. Guys. I've never seen this in a real live game. If there was a fire alarm, I would pull it. Yeah. No, this, notice how no nothing's this, happening. This is he has all game. the idle right. SCVs. We were joking. Yeah, no, no. This is bug. It's, it's a bug game. Yeah. I it's don't know what's game. going on. I want to see if we call it first. If it was us or the crane car. I want to know. This is our Sherlock moment. Is casters. Well, this is proof that when we the can crane cast anything. casters call it, they'll pause it. So we definitely won on that taste. So there's not even a question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's okay, we just got text and it's broken. So now what do we do? Yeah, I have no idea. I have no idea how you're supposed to fix I this. I wonder if we have, I, we'll do it if we if we can, but I just wonder if we have the technology to switch to first person on one of them. Wow, new bug here. Yeah, switching to first person would be probably the best way to do this. I don't know. Yeah, the Korean stream looks the same as ours. Okay. Wow, well this is, this is really kind of sad. See all these like probes going down Are here? Are you kidding me? This, this is my best. Okay, they just need to stop the game. Well, like, even, the we thing don't, is, I don't, maybe what they could do is get camera guys behind them. I'll take anything, anything over watching over. these no, units is, sit here. You know what? This is fine. I, I, this is, I like this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see why you have to always be complaining, Artosis. So, guys, we are live in a bugged game. This was probably a really cool game, too. Yeah. Because, guys, what happens is there's a desync. I've seen this in replays before. Yes, that's why we were joking about this earlier. Yeah, something desyncs in a replay occasionally, and then you just see banks go up and stuff. And some of the clicks that the players are doing work, and some don't. And we see that, uh, like, a bunch of starports were made in Wraiths. So this game turned into something, because it's not like they're playing and it looks like this for them. They're actually playing the real game right hey, now, and guys, it's Wraith against Carrier, which is super neat. I was just contacted by production. This game is not bugged. This is exactly what it looks like right now. <laughs> <laughs> not. No, seriously. Not. Not. <laughs> Wayne's World. <laughs> um, this is so weird. Yeah. So we're just going to... I have to imagine the production room. It's like everything's on fire right now. Like, well, it must what, be. What, what, I don't what, know why what, we're what, still what watching this. Now, what's funny this is, is we, not we how to make StarCraft so Remastered a better esports watching this game. No, I think it's the next level here, you know? Um, now, I'll tell you what. I'm kind of surprised we've casted so many games of Remastered, and this is the first time we're experiencing this well, bug, and how unfortunate that this bug is happening. I don't understand how the bug how can unlucky. happen. It's like the Observer desynced from the players could be the only thing. But if the Observer can desync from the player, that would be players Okay, I think we actually... Whoa, we're we are, back! We're in the actual game now. We did it. I don't know how we did it. Yeah, so they're both maxed out. Yeah. Look at that. A bunch of cloaked rates coming in from the side. How many Observers? Three Observers? Three Observers. Try zero Observers. Friend. Look at this. Look at this. Where's your Observers now, bro? Oh, I think oh wait, he put they're another still observer there. In there. He hit one off screen. That's, okay. the, that's the trick as old as oh. time. Oh. When Terrence are like, I got you, man. And he... Oh, hold on. He's... And hold on, though. Like, we're going for it. Does we're he diving. have a fifth Observer hiding somewhere, though? Unfortunately, this is not enough of uh, Wraiths to, to kill us off at a speed. Well, hold on. Where's the other Observer? Come on. Yeah, if he had, like, there four more Wraiths, There he is. Man. Ah! Ugh. All right. That was so weird. How did that even happen? Can we go back to the bug? Can we go back to the bug yeah, game? I, was, I want to see how many minerals are Yeah, I, I was watching the probes long distance mine in the bottom left, but Artos was like, oh, what are they doing for real? <laughs> So, uh, it looks like Terran's going to have to try to protect the upper right. Um, now, these zealots finally have speed. The, the uh, carriers are going to be able to target down the tanks. Are there enough Goliaths to combat this? Now, if the tanks get low enough in numbers and the Protoss army is fluid enough, it should be able to overrun this. But it seems like a lot of them are getting stuck on this pillar over here in the center of the screen. The tanks oh, have now been whittled down. And I think the zealots and the dragoons can clean up the rest. This looks like it should should be a domination in the upper right corner here, which will knock light back on to three bases, whereas Rain has five. Yeah, this is this is a little bit rough. We saw light diving on the observers and losing lots of rates doing so. So that ended up not paying off. Um, you know, I, I feel like this game, GG, but I feel like this game doesn't count because well, if that I was my That was my proper, favorite game of the series. I don't know about you guys, but if I, if Can I we get the seen highlights the... of the bug version of that game? <laughs> you know, like the part where the probes get transferred yeah. and there's uh, no nexus there. That was good. I want that to be in, in the highlight reel at the end of the show. Yeah. I, All right. uh... Now, does Rain and, and Light know that nobody saw what happened back there? No, I have no idea. If a game falls in the woods and there's no one there to cast it, does it make a VOD? It's going to be the 
either least or most viewed VOD of the series. Yeah. Not sure which one. Um, anyways, that I, I feel like if the game hadn't been frozen, I could have properly cheered for Light and helped him to take this game. So this, I feel like this is just, you know? Yeah. Ugh. Ugh. Rain is so lucky I couldn't properly cheer for my boy. How does that happen that the Observer desyncs yeah, from the game? I'm not, I haven't seen it. I've never seen it, and like I think that's the first time it's ever happened, as far as I know. Uh, there was I, I, uh, there I was a no, new patch uh, very recently, so maybe. I know, but I heard no murmurings of, uh, of no, this. me either, me either. Yeah, I'm not sure. It's very strange. Well, after well, I, something like that happens, there's only one thing we should do: it's go to a break and make sure it doesn't happen again, or at least we'll try. We'll be right back. All right, everybody relax. Everybody calm down. We have the replay. I'm sure you guys were knocking over your bowls of cereal, typing in caps locks, the rage, the disappointment. Yes. No, it's okay. We've got the replay, and we're going to pull that up for you guys in a moment. Uh, the game bugged right as the attack on the third was occurring where the Reaver and the Dragoons and the Zealots were trying to break yeah, a little bit Terran. before that even, because remember actually, we were yeah, talking about we how he had a bunch of units version. as natural? Right. He actually has way more tanks up there now. So So this bug occurred as they were... Um, as he was moving towards his third. Yeah, the, as you see, the third was being acquired and the Protoss was trying to attack in. Um, again, the results, Protoss won, but it looks like uh, Rain managed to keep him overall on three bases for a while. And then um, win with Carrier. Yeah. Sell it. yeah, it seems like Light tried to pull a fast one and go Wraiths against Carriers, which is yeah. kind of, it's like a really weird way to play. Sometimes you just get a victory off of it, uh, but it has to be completely unpredictable because if they just can see the Wraiths, they can't do anything. So we're going to hop in that replay now. Okay, so, so here's what actually happened. Yeah. So last time, guys, we saw two tanks up there. There were actually four. Yeah. And uh, these two in the back managed to drive this army away. This looks so much more realistic than yeah. what we were looking it was at. Yeah. So funny because the. It's like, damn, light's choking. It's too bad. Yeah, acid minerals got so high. Hold on a second. So we're gonna we watch have... two X. Well. Okay, so Protoss is now spending their money, and then we see the gas now plummet back down here. Yeah, that's uh, that's, that's why we have a lot of minerals because <laughs> he's actually going three port cloak. Right. Uh, and so, normally you get Goliaths to try to combat the carriers. It's more of a head-to-head um, -head fight where you try to take the carriers on with your own strength. The Wraiths are an attempt to surprise the Protoss because, especially if you see Reaver attack carry, you don't always have that many observers. And a lot of times if the Terran is scanning and killing observers that are just outside the proximity of the Terran's expansion, uh, when the Wraiths come in, if they scan and kill maybe the one or two observers that's actually with the army, mm. the Wraiths just kill all the carriers. The Protoss have no real army equity in the late game, and the Terran one with a push. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, you know, I think that he probably did this thinking he didn't really want to play the longer game on this map against carriers because it gets so, so, so difficult. If you misstep, you're kind of dead. Whereas here, if the Protoss missteps, you get all the carriers, right? And then you're in a great spot. It's just you can't really go into 2-1 easily while going rates, and your siege tank count's going to be rather low. So we see him making a lot of vultures here. Rain, though, just continuing to expand. He's playing such a careful game, you can see. Like, if he had committed heavily with his attack, right, if he, like, went across the map with the four carriers and that little group of goons, that's the type of situation where you can pick off all of the carriers so quickly and just win the game. Yeah. Um, we don't normally see this in, in pro matches. No, it's very rare to see yeah. this at any high level yeah. because it is so risky. It's really a gamble gamble. Yeah, it, it actually is a late game gamble gamble. And um, here we see, I would say, the climax of the game here. Protoss tries to counter across the small bridge. And here's where the race they're like, uh, uh, Oh, wow, that's the first time uh, you even showed them. Yeah. Yeah, they was at this moment. He has that here. many observers. So Did he just... He felt it, I guess. Yeah, he sensed it. I think he was confused. This shows how smart Rain is, but I think I think he basically figured out that this was the case based on the fact that there were only vultures coming out and there was, like, no unit movement. Against carriers, you want to try to attack a lot earlier. 
You know, you don't wait for them to get to your base with four to six carriers. So one thing about combating math rates, that doesn't quite come off the tongue that easily. Yeah. Mass rates yeah. uh, is that you keep an observer off to the, like a screen aside, like this one here. You come back and hit them and, you know, Wraiths do so much damage to air, but they take damage faster than almost anything in the game, mm -hmm. especially the things that hit air. <laughs> yeah, so, they're very weak. So uh, what we saw back there was, I think, Light taking a bit of a risk, which, by the way, Light is not very well known for. And I think that's an intelligent yeah. idea I think it's fine for, for him to try. Yeah. He was tied up 1-1. Maybe you take a risk. Maybe you come out ahead. Uh, we're going to go on to the map, Eddie for game four, cool, but cool. Rain has once again taken the lead here in game three. It's now 2-1 in his favor. So will Light go for standard play, and can he take Rain on uh, in this case? Again, the, the map that Light won on was um, Blockchain, which, again, is a very unusual map. Yeah. If we have a map, uh, in this case, a four-player map, maybe it would allow for some more standard play. How does Light fare against Rain? Well, this is a much more standard macro map. Like I was saying, the three really kind of harder maps for TVP are out of the way, and Light picked up a victory in those. So, uh, Eddie, this is, you know, his uh, map choice, I believe. That's how we're doing it here in the finals. Um, but either way, it's definitely one, as long as you don't screw up the early game, you're going to play a big, big macro game here. And that's something that Light has shown he's good at. Okay. We are ready to start our game. This is Rain versus Light, the last day of official StarCraft here in the year 2019. Right now, Rain with a 2-1 lead. This is a best of seven. Map four is Eddie. Did I time this outro out correctly, Artosis? You nailed it. I think, as That's long it. as I can keep talking. <laughs> uh, let's go into game four, right? Wait for it, now. So it's rain in the upper right and light in the bottom left. Yeah, so cross spawns. I have nothing too big to say about that. Uh, one thing we should watch for is that, and this is true in a, several matchups, but the area outside the natural is problematic to push out from for any race against almost any race. If somebody has control outside of your natural, the berth is so wide. Uh. Like if Terran is trying to push out of their natural and there's Dragoons out there, very hard, uh, the Dragoons can um, descend onto the tanks, do damage and run back out. And it's hard for Terran to get a lot of surface area. The same is true for if uh, Terran contains a Protoss at their natural. Well, uh, on, on these spots and with these two players, I think that that probably won't come into play too much. You know, it's gonna be hard to uh, rally units across that far of a distance and do any sort of contain. Normally on Eddie as well, it's like really a map where you want to get three bases as quickly as possible as Terran. Uh, they have a reasonable layout and, uh, you know, you just kind of take all of your high ground on what this do you, map. What do you think about scouting on the ninth probe here? Yeah. This is sure. a very, very old uh, way to scout in StarCraft. This was basically the original scout timing uh, in the first few years. I'd say even the first half for a lot of StarCraft, to be honest. Uh, all the races scouted early on because at the time, or at that time, I should say, uh, players are much more busy trying to just get a glimpse of where their opponent was, where they put the buildings, and trying to almost intuit a response to that, where the game was much more mapped out. But scouting this early tells me that Rain must really want to try to find something right away or confirm that something's not there right away. Well, it might be that he's looking for gasless expands because Light has really been favoring that so far, right? Yeah. He really has been wanting to go for that gasless expand quite a bit. He you know, he's quite strong with it. Actually, in his career in the last two years, he's shown that. Not even in this matchup. He's done it against Zergs and Terrans as well. 
Yeah. Uh, he likes to occasionally throw out a cheeky quick command center, and if you don't see it and you don't punish it right away, he's already taking a lead. And against a very mechanical player like Light, that can be incredibly difficult to, to face off against. Now, uh, to be fair, the, the new way that you counter uh, something like a quick probe with this is to do what Light just did, where you just get the late gas. So it turns the Terran build order into almost a non-build order, right? It's a it's very slow factory, but it's safe. You're not going to die to something like a proxy robo. It's you're you're going to get your tank out in plenty of time. But the build itself is kind of, you look at it and you're like, well, this isn't what you wanted, but okay. <laughs> So uh, it, it, the scouting of it is the Terran afraid that there's going to be a rush coming that yes. they can't just handle, or is there any presence of the probe being able to interfere with that, or is it? Well, just the fact that the probe hits there that early, you look at that and say, okay, well, this is a situation where Zots can run by. This is a situation where there could be proxy robo. This is a, a situation where many, many different things can occur. So it's just safer to slow down your command center a little bit, get the gas up so that you can get siege tanks out to stop whatever's coming. And Light respecting that quick scout from Rain gets that CC up later. But this also allows Rain to, to really leverage the situation in his own favor. He gets a command center, I'm sorry, a nexus over at his natural. And this is sizing up to be a pretty complex early game as far as openings go compared to a lot of the other games we cast here in KSL, and that we really are casting the best of the best here, but a lot went into the planning here on both sides and how they're responding. Yes, absolutely. In, in a game where they're, for the most part, not really engaging each other, just getting a read on each other and trying yeah, to yeah. preempt any kind of attacks. Yeah, and like, for instance, they, what Light's doing here, this is a very fresh response to being scouted quickly, right? I feel like a lot of this does come from that one that one map snow played with the proxy robot, I feel like put us into these positions where uh, there's an entire new set of uh, different ways to play. Now, two factories coming up for light. Again, pretty standard. The Zealot block on the ramp was really awesome from, uh, from Rain because he's unable to actually get in and see what this tech is. That probably means that we'll see an engineering bay. Yeah, an engineering bay would seem to be the the safest play. Yeah. There oh, no, I like oh, that. Oh, and that's an so, old school eBay. Yeah. Uh, the very, very early days of StarCraft, one of the first things people realized was you could build your own building to stop their building from being made there. Uh, so the eBay being put here denies Protoss freely taking a Nexus without uh, fighting to get it. Yeah. Um, and, you know, Protoss, especially in cross bonds, they tend to take that third Nexus pretty fast and pretty freely. Yeah. And putting the eBay here, um, if this does finish, now, funnily enough, if it doesn't, <laughs> then you know there's not an eBay back at home. So I almost wonder if this may cause him to switch into Reavers abruptly. Mm. Yeah, there is the possibility of that. And honestly, there was another thing that I was thinking that maybe if the scout had not come, I was wondering if there was a possibility that he actually finishes it for the scout. Yeah, same. 125 minerals, you get a turret up at home, and you get a full scout of the main base is not, yeah. a, not a terrible deal. And then you know if you need more turrets anyways, right? I mean, yeah, the eBay doesn't yeah. die that quickly. Yeah, absolutely. But in this case, you know, it's it's done a little bit, not a lot. Now, one thing to point out, I didn't see a probe over there uh, to make a nexus, and I still don't see one now. So seems as though there's not going to be an immediate third base. Protoss is going to power up a little bit more, and there it is, the <laughs> Robotech. <laughs> well, you called that. It does look like that's what we're going to see here from, uh, from Rain. So he'll be going into that, but uh, it is another eBay being made at home. And yeah, the armory, that's absolutely what you'd want to get in this situation as well. Mm -hmm. Armory is actually going to put um, light into a pretty good spot overall, I'd say. Yeah. Now note the vultures came up there again to check and identify that there is not a third base, at least being taken there. Mm -hmm. There is an island on this map. If you do go for Reavers, you can take an island. This is sort of the old lost temple yeah. build of PBT. That's exactly what he's doing, too, because we see the Stargate coming down. So this will be a, a very quick carrier build, which is strong on this map because of the islands again, right? If you right. open up with Reaver in a situation like this, you have that shuttle, you can take the third base, and you have carriers. So the third base falling is not even something you consider being a possibility. Now, conceptually, this build being uh, originated on the very first competitive StarCraft map, Lost Temple, I guess there was a few others around that time, too, but you guys get the gist if you've been playing StarCraft for a long time. Uh, this is one of the few openings that's basically stuck around. 
Now, in this case, he goes straight into carriers, which again reinforces the concept of island expanding and defending while still having a real presence that they can take on a push. Now, that academy is late enough that if the one of the first scans don't see the carriers, he is going to be in trouble with that. It's drop coming across the map. Uh, yeah, he's actually his turret spread's not so bad. It's not like perfect for this situation. Like that's an anti-DT turret rather than Reaver turret. But if the, like if he sees this shuttle coming at all before it gets there, it's gonna be awesome. I think we just yeah, saw look at that. He sees it. Okay, that is that's huge that he sees so it. So shuttle speed's done now. Also typical with this kind of build. But it seems like as strong as this build is uh, and as old as it is. Terran would seem to have a better mechanism to adapt to this, which is not to frantically push into the Protoss or try to take the island away from the Protoss, but instead to freely grow on their side of the map as well. And carriers are quite strong, just in general, especially when paired with Reaver openings in modern StarCraft. Um, in cross spots, I, it seems to me like healthy Goliath tech can more than handle this, depending on the control here of Terran. It doesn't seem like... Uh, Dragoons with carriers and, and reavers. I mean, they can, with good finesse, do damage, but also it seems like he could handle this. And by the way, I'm sorry, he never actually took the island. We saw yeah, the availability yeah. of the island to be taken later on, but. Ooh, that mine! Oh! Oh my gosh. Sickest mine. Yeah, that's a really well placed mine, because yeah. that's exactly where you want to drop that. I Yellow thought... reaver still does full damage, taste. This is an old proverb. <laughs> <laughs> now, he's stuck in here, right? You actually can't get out with the... Uh, uh, no, I think he just flies right oh, out. Oh, wow. Okay, See that yeah. turret should have been placed a hex over then. Yes, you are definitely right about that. <laughs> that would be a slightly misplaced turret. Um, okay, so uh, you were talking about how you think that the Goliaths should be able to deal with this still, and uh, certainly in just a very straight-up fight, you would be correct about this. The reason why I think it, this is a very good build on this map, other than having islands... Ah! is because there's a lot of switches to high ground. And when you get those switches to high ground, the Protoss army uh, fights so well, right? Because you're going to be missing a ton of shots going uphill. So the what you'll see from Rain likely is dancing around through high ground situations where he's kind of making the Terran siege, he's getting the extra hits in, then he's retreating a bit. So Terran's beginning to push. Protoss has got to be careful with that. Sh oh, 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 my God. That he was a sick it. snipe. Yeah, the fact that oh, he I killed... beat you to it, and I said, oh, ho, oh, oh, ho, oh. <laughs> <laughs> he, ho. Uh, he actually killed uh, the, the two Reavers in the shuttle, which more was than Was there halves, two in there? I thought there was. I, I, maybe I'm wrong, but I thought there was two Reavers. No, I guess there was one. You're I right. there was one. There was one because he had the Zealot and the, uh, the Reaver earlier, and the shuttle never went all the way back. I stand corrected. So in this build, he gets shuttles out and then goes straight into Reaver Tech instead of trying to just get two Reavers. Two is not always better than one in this case. And there's the fourth base. Now, that does not appear to be a contestable location. So Light is going to have to, through raw strength, push through this, which I think he can do, by the way, because he got rid of the Reaver. Uh, he, he needs a macro a little bit longer. But yeah, I mean, he's. it's not like he's missing his macro here, right? He hasn't really been slowed down this game. He's pretty much nailing his factory add-ons. He has a decent amount of siege shanks. But again, this is a situation where we're going to see a lot of tactical play, and that's something that Rain is very good at. Uh, you know, if you're if you're fighting from high ground and things like that. Yeah, there's a lot of ways that you can run around this. One thing about uh, the way the tech develops for Terran when they're going against carriers is they no longer have vultures. So. Uh, a lot of times, oddly enough, even though the carriers appear to be the biggest threat and they have to be answered or the Protoss wins the game, the Zealots become the real thing that actually wipes out the Terran's army. Yeah, sometimes they definitely do. And the longer, longer the game gets, we will see Psy Storm, which is right. when you have Psy Storm on high grounds with carriers, that's it. Like, you are, yeah. Psy Storm is so good against Goliaths trying to fight carriers because yeah, Goliaths have to be clumped. The Goliaths, in a lot of ways, function almost exactly like Hydralisks do. And we know what Psy Storm does to that if you have enough of it. Yeah. And uh, even though the Psy Storm does hit the interceptors, that's usually inconsequential. Now we have nine factories for light, only one add-on. So his Goliath count is going to be really large. Also some beautifully laid mines, scouting where those carriers are out. Even seeing that 
one time. You know, uh, you have a really great idea of what's going on. Only two gases out of the four bases for Rain have been taken, which means that he will not have any Templars. Now, you, that little thing we saw there where the carriers attacked and then stopped, that's so that because it's this weird thing in the game. The, the interceptors come out one by one the first time they attack, and then after that, they all come out at once. And so he wants to have them, oh. as we're seeing here, all come out at, well, they were all going to come out at once, but he decides to pull away <laughs> because why would you stay in this position when no. the army is this much of a threat? Definitely. And similarly to game two, although the Protoss tech is different circumstantially, I actually think this game might end in a similar fashion where Light might just topple Protoss. Yeah, there's a possibility, but right now he's chasing with his whole army one Zealot, so he can't be doing things like that. You have to be really, really, really decisive here. We need to see Light move out right now. He's got a huge amount of supply. Maybe he's waiting for 2-1 to finish up? Let's see, we're at 13 minutes. It should be done. Okay, he's at 1-1. That plus 2 should be done any second now. Okay. Protoss is regrouping. And by the way, Protoss is set up to try to uh, out... Oh, my God, that actual wall in there with the Dragoon stuck. He's got to be careful when he macros, <laughs> man. Yeah. Um, now, Ooh. seems like Light is going to try to break the back of Rain here in a second. Rain is getting in position. You can see he's debating possibly running around. Light's army is a lot better right now. It's a lot better. This is really going to come down to these carriers, I think. All right, let's see it. A lot of vultures here to clean out those zealots. Uh, not as many Goliaths as you would think right now, but really he's got to deal with that ground army first. And the ground army is going to get shattered here. The dragoons have to pull back. Now, I will say Rain handled that pretty well. He came in there, he killed off some of the tanks with the carriers, and he pulled back once the zealots were gone. He needs to reload with more zealots, and as the tanks try to come in again, uh, he wants to wait for the zealots, as we're seeing here. When he has enough, he will come in and attack on top of that army. And I have to say, Rain really knows how to engage yeah. these armies. It's, it's pretty incredible. Light made a little mistake there. He lost like eight to 10 extra vultures because he was trying to keep the attack going. He let the vultures fight the goons as they pulled back. Rain smartly stopped. He killed the vultures and pulled back as the tank Goliath moved forward. So some great control here so far from Rain. But Light is still macroing like a fiend right now on these nine factories. Yeah, and as the tension continues to build in the center of the map, Protoss is forced to ignore the exterior corners of the map. And we're seeing that with the upper left base being taken and no real avail availability to harass that. Mm -hmm. Remember that that shuttle and reaver were shot down. Yeah. Even though that's normally used in the fight, a lot Dude, of times in moments oh like this, God. it's used to harass. He took two bases. He took the mineral base and the top left. Oh, I didn't even notice the, oh the bottom God. center. Yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. It's so two. good. Now, this is a good way to flush Protoss out in the long run because uh, Terran ends up with just a little bit more momentum. Well, he needs to actually get an engagement oh, going on. He's here. got DTs coming here. You know, yeah. there's there's no vessel here. Not that a vessel is the only thing that's going to stop DTs. But if those DTs are sent to additional bases around the map, that's another way to try to deal with this, is to max Terran's multitasking out. Ooh, that's a very bad angle to attack into. OK, he does have a vessel there. That's really, really good. Has to be careful not to lose that. He's got those two on upgrades. I'm sure 3-2 is on the way. Ooh, look at that. He, I think he was trying to get that vessel for a second there, but some good pickoffs so far from Rain. Look at that. Very nice, very nice. Now, Rain has taken this top center base as well to mirror the position that Terran has at the bottom, but there's no probes there yet. Uh, meanwhile, this attack's coming here. Now, Terran is not sieged up. Now, Terran is sieged up, and look at this beautifully Rain pulls mm -hmm. away. Mm -hmm. He's hardly doing any, this so well. Yeah, hardly any artillery even firing. It might have been better for him to actually whip around again. These guys are both reacting so quickly. Now, watch. The carriers try to target down the tanks. If the tanks are targeted down, oh over God. time, the Protoss army becomes superior. Dragoons and Zealots can win the fight. Well, Light actually has 1,100 gas, so he can have more than one add-on pumping tanks and still make enough Goliaths to deal with this. And Very I, true. We really do need to see that. That's one thing that a lot of people screw up on is they're, they over-counter the carriers. Okay, see, he has three add-ons. Oh, my God, Light, you're so good. He has the top left base. He's so good. And now we have a really good EMP over on those carriers. And I, I feel like we're watching a Terran almost play like a Zerg against his Protoss and just continue to gobble up the map. And now this army in the middle of the map is puny. It's inferior. The interceptors have been lowered to such a minuscule amount that I don't know that catch up is realistic. And I think, I think from here, Light can actually snowball this game. 
uh, into crushing rain in the upper right corner of the map. In fact, not even necessarily taking out bases, but pushing all the way through. This is flash level macro coming out of light right now. This is absolute insanity. He's even taking the bottom right. He's expanding everywhere, keeping so many units in the center while spending all of his money and keeping pressure on. This is madness. This is so hard to deal with for Protoss. Okay, he backs up again. Now, Templars are finally entering the game. But I worry this game is less about tech and more about uh, expansions and the room for error here. Uh, Terran continues to push further forward here. Uh, interceptors are coming out from the carriers, but it's not the ideal amount. He's not maxed out with eight in each right now. Well, hold on, though. He's actually starting to break through. Where are those reinforcements? Might end up losing quite a few units here. Those carriers picking off quite a few siege tanks, but now the Goliath's coming forward. They do have three two upgrades trying to take down a carrier. There's just enough tank here, tanks here. The ground army's beginning to be whittled away. Reinforcements are coming up. Supplies are virtually even. He's got to be careful. You don't want to overfight with these Goliaths yeah. up front. You need to reinforce. If, okay. if, if Terran smashes this next push, I'm sorry, Protoss smashes this next push, uh, Protoss will be free yeah. to come through on the map and start to wipe out the upper left if he scouts it out correctly. Yeah, and if you can kill everything in the upper left, then this becomes a real, real game at that point. Look at this, though. The Dragoons are starting to melt. These three, two upgrades, just fantastic. Almost, yes, gets another carrier. Gets another carrier. Three carriers left. Okay, but with the amount of bases that Protoss has, I'm worried this becomes more an issue of the ground army here. The number of gateways that Protoss should have should be very, very, very high. And if he can reinforce this with Zealots, Dragoons, Templars, uh, he still might be able to push through here. I as weird you. as it sounds, I think there actually is a realistic shot of rain coming out on top. Uh, I, I, in my opinion, I'm looking at this game right now, and the fact that he got him down to three carriers when he has this many bases he's on nine factories with three two upgrades, I feel like the ground army, all it's doing is buying time for carriers who do damage. But now that the carrier count is so low, I think we're going to see some attack move action here in a 2-2 set. Uh, you might be right, Artosis. The Terran upgrades are much better than the Protosses in this game, but if he keeps sniping the tanks, I just can't count him out yet. Yeah, yeah. So he is fighting from the high ground here, taking a much more favorable engagement. Light backs up, he sieges, Rain turns around, gets out of there. I question, though, how aware Rain is of these additional bases. Yeah. All it would take is a Zealot and a Dragoon at each of these bases to interrupt <laughs> all the mining. It's not like Terran has a lot of mobility here. There are not vultures really in this game right now. No, no. You know, he's got such a high gas bank. You actually almost don't even want many vultures, maybe to pick off a few units here and there. But he has already laid some mines. You see the Dragoons were going up to check, but they turn around. He does not want to run through a minefield right now. Terran's outposted over here in the center location at 9 o'clock. Uh, Protoss has rebuilt a, a pretty crafty army here. Again, though, uh, the income from Terran, it's very hard to match this. But Psystorm Carriers, Dragoon Zealots mm -hmm. can absolutely destroy <laughs> uh, Siege Tank Goliath. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's got the Vultures out now, so yeah. this is going to help a little bit. Even though the Vultures are kind of the weak unit here, you can pick off High Tumblers really quickly. You lay these mines that help to buffer a bit as well. Look at this. He scans. He gets in there. Picks off one. Uh, they aren't being that efficient as of yet. Feel like but all he needs have, to do is get on this high ground. I feel like we don't have any observers with this army, which is yeah. uh, certainly an issue. <gasps> and now the Vulture's taking out these Templars. That's huge. Yes, that is so, so big. And now Light has also taken this high ground position. And that was what Rain was using to stay in this game. Now we can see Light just attack forward into this mineral base. Light might actually be able to topple him here. This is the moment that Rain absolutely cannot lose control of this game, and I don't know that control will really cut it at this point in time. There's just too many Goliaths, and the Siege Tanks sieging up. Oh, man, there are a ton of Goliaths here. These 3-3 three, three tanks will just chew through these Dragoons as well, maybe pushing a little bit far forward with those Goliaths. We'd love to see them pull back slightly, but Light right now, so confident in his push. And what were Dragoons is now a pile of blue goo as Terran pushes forward at this 12 o'clock location that has been contested this entire game. I think this is probably the moment where Terran will come out on top as rain supply is now below 120. Wow. It like, it just some amazing play. The interceptor's almost all gone. Even a couple drops of CG. CG. And Hell yes. Yes, indeed. Woo. That right there was some damn good macro.
That was some flash level stuff we just saw out of light. He took so, he suddenly, right? He was on three bases, started to push. We don't even notice, we see the whole map. We don't even notice. It's crazy Five because- bases. Now uh, what? He, Six bases, seven bases. Can I have eight bases? No, I can't. But seven bases is a lot. Now, he managed to take uh, all those bases, and while Rain was trying to fight the army head up, he discounted the sheer production that was coming from light. And uh, it, look, it was it was nine factories. He got into those three add-ons at the right time. Light is so well practiced for this, and his mechanics are so strong. His fundamentals are so good. He is playing some beautiful StarCraft here tonight. You can see what happens when you practice the good, strong fundamentals that he always does. A lot of people say, oh, he's predictable. Oh, you know, I kind of know what he's going to do ahead of time. But when you practice as a pro gamer for 13 years, after years of practicing as an amateur, in this type of regard, here you are at the championship level, right? Right. He's tied up two to two against Rain. Now, this I, is anyone's series. I don't think we're going to get a shot of it, but that Shuttle and Reaver were picked off, which should give it a little bit more momentum with his push. Now, this was Rain's best moment. As you can see, he managed to, s to single out the tanks that were over here. Um, and when you take out enough of those tanks, suddenly the Zealous and Dragoons can fare very well against uh, Vulture Goliath. He also knew exactly when to turn around. Now, as the game progressed on, we're looking at the fights, but take a look at the bottom left corner of the screen, the mini-map there. <laughs> Notice the bottom center as well as the upper left yeah. are under Terra control. The SCVs are mining. So ultimately, these fights and how they go down are really inconsequential because if math serves us correctly and um, Light's macro is good enough, it does. The sheer Terran production will, over time, win this arm wrestling match of whose army is better. Yeah, yeah, it was, uh, what a crazy game this was. Yeah, this was very cool. He um, really, Light really showed so much power here. Because it shows not just how to take in army versus army, you know, how to win this fight. It was, look, just expand. They don't have a mobile army. Carriers are slow. It must be, uh, and, escorted the whole time by Dragoons. And so to just have this army trying to defend these locations, it allows Terran to suddenly branch out and just take over all these key locations on the map. Yeah, I, I want to point something out here, right? Consistently throughout that game, 350 APM for Light. He's, he did some very difficult things. He set up a bunch of other bases while keeping pressure on. And most importantly, oh, he kept trophy. that pressure on. Artosis. Look at that trophy. I, I know you're in love with that trophy. It's so good. You know, that's pure cold. Well, pure if you, gold. Well, if you make friends with these guys, one of them can show you it at their house. If they see my ladder games, they will never be friends with me. <laughs> All right. Fighting Spirit coming up next. Dude, huh. we have a real match here. It's 2-2. Two, two. Yeah. Two. Good. You know what's funny here? Everyone's like, it's a Terran map. Yet here we have Rain. The first map choice he got was Overwatch. No one argues with that being a Protoss map. Second map choice, Fighting Spirit. He's like, give me them Protoss <laughs> maps. Give me them wins. We are going to go into this game uh, in a second here. Again, it's 2-2. Light with a very different win. But as far as ideas go, he did win with that heavy push. This time with map control to back it up against Rain. How will he do it here on this map? This is a very sorted and solved map in yes. this matchup. Are we going to have a textbook game? Or is it going to be pretty creative? We are going to find out as we now go into game five. This is the KSL Finals, the last day of StarCraft for 2019, where we will crown a champion, either Rain or Light. Okay, we've got both players hugging the right side of the map. Protoss at the bottom and Terran at the top. Okay, okay. So these spots are really not bad for uh, for light. Um, they're not like the best. I, well, it matters if you like cross spots or these spots. But what I'm trying to say is if his third base was towards rain, Ooh. that would be a very tough spot. But it's a not. calligrapher nerd. Yeah, look at this. Look at that. 
that's that in dark class. that's in uh, what is it? Feudal times font. But ooh, look at this, Chad Light. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> Look at that picture of Tasteless right That's there. That's right, man. Look at that no regret one. I just want to, oh my god. Look at the chin on Rapid. <laughs> or, uh, yeah. <laughs> on Rapid there. Thank you for that artwork. Loved it. Um, but did that also get the award for the sign? Did they give it out to two people? I don't people? know. They both deserve it. Because that sign, otherwise the second sign would have won if it was oh. actually in medieval font. I thought you said that light was in the bottom right. Okay, these oh, are I actually. I might have actually done that. I might have swapped okay, them. Yeah, these are actually good spots for rain. Uh, this is a this is a game where I, if if I'm not mistaken, rain should end up going Reaver, and denying the third base of light. Ah, uh, because the third base naturally, you can, intends to take the center right, and so if you can get your army over there, you can kind of push that away. Yeah, and normally Reaver is very good for that. We saw him doing that a little bit on Overwatch as well. It's another decent map for it. In these spots, though, you can. Rotate from defending your base to attacking their third to attacking their natural like so quickly. So, um, yeah, I think Reaver is the best, but you can do it with just shuttle and goons. It just yeah. kind of matters how you want to play it. But yeah, so yeah, these these are the best spots you can get in PVT on the map. It seems like there's two approaches um, to this map, and I think we're gonna go with your approach for this one for sure. I think that makes yeah. more sense. But the other one is to completely ignore the Terran and to not sure. attack them at all and yeah, just yeah. go for the uh, macro game here. But uh, I think, especially in these spots out of all of them, you really need to come in there and actually threaten um, that that would be third base, because otherwise it's just very easy to push into the main. Yeah, it's um, if if you do go straight macro, generally it ends up being an arbiter game. Where right. You have five bases as Protoss at the critical moment. Uh, that Terran comes out maxed with two one. Uh, I don't think that either player is going to go for exactly that. Anyways, it looks like a factory expand from Light. No big surprise there. He's been doing a lot of gasless expands. I think he needs to put that build order away. Got to vary that a little bit. He's getting a decent scout off. Dragoon will be out in about 20 seconds. So he's going to have to get this SCV out of here before then. So, um... One little subtle thing here is that, um, and we'll each, okay, he will find this. I was going to say, <laughs> yeah. if, if you don't find that second pylon right away, you can assume that they might have some kind of really cheesy build coming your way. But the thing is, at this level of play, it almost always means they hit the pylon somewhere else. Yeah. But uh, especially if you're in a ladder game, that's a good little freebie. If you want to just hide a pylon somewhere, and if they don't scat it, you can send them on an incorrect build order algorithm. So it looks like Rain wants to get a Quite a quick uh, nexus here. Of course, the command center coming up after the bunker, so very safe play from from light. And now we get to see from light: does he add the second factory? Does he add the starport? Or does he go armory and academy? Those are our options. Yeah, I'm very curious to see what it's going to be. Yeah. We won't see until the siege tank and depot are done, but after that. <laughs> So he makes that Nexus now. And there's a second Dragoon that was kept back here for a little bit in case there was going to be a Vulture run by or an SCV that's going to run in. I think we're actually going to have that SCV try to come in now. Yeah, yeah. It's very standard. This is the exact timing that you check for the Nexus to check if they're one basing you. If the Nexus is not started by 4 minutes and 20 seconds, then there is cheese coming your way. Nice, the 420 timing, Artosis, we did it's it. true. <laughs> of course, that's a Protoss timing, too. There's enough viewers at home with a bong getting very paranoid right now that we mentioned that. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you can see the Dragoons are gonna come up now. He's and we actually have a Robo here. Now, I is, I'm assuming this is, oh my god, one Dragoon bugged, one Dragoon bugged! This means the uh, tank is gonna get on the high ground, and this is a terrible opening, but somehow by the, by the fate of the gods of Protoss that one Dragoon did not die. Now, just to go back to what we saw there, it's with two Dragoons, it's four shots in, in, in unison to kill a tank. Um, and so occasionally if it tanks out too far, you can dive on it and just kill it. But that didn't work, those Dragoons are injured, and now we're gonna have almost a reversal here of some aggression from the Terran. Um, I and this is actually, I think, not Reaver play because of the timing of the third gateway from the Protoss. Yeah, yeah. It appears that it's actually going to be three gateway Dragoon. Yeah, three gate with OBS, which is one of Rain's favorite builds, to be honest. Um, this is so weird, though. I don't. What is like getting as an upgrade from his factory? He started his upgrade so early. 
Artosis. He's, does he just have mines? This is the one of the weirder builds that I've seen. This might the, well, be the weirdest this build is, today. This, this oftentimes almost feels like it's just an instinct move here, where he realizes, okay, the, the, the Terran is hurting, or the Protoss is hurting, excuse me. I'm going to try to push across the map, but where does this go, actually? Because now the Vulture one-shots this, and this is all due to the fact that Rain, perhaps impulsively, decided to dive on the tank, and the Dragoon bugged, and it completely and totally backfired. Great control here by Rain, but uh, Light wiggles away. Vultures are going to come down here. Now, we should have an Observer coming up onto the screen in a moment. Yeah, yeah. Well, but, I mean, uh, he will clear this, but advantage light big oh, time. Big hugely. Time. Ah! Oh, my God. This is, you know, this can happen. Usually, Terran's got to fall apart really quickly in this matchup, but if something like this happens, it's the Protoss that will usually lose control of the game. Um, we see another mine going down. There's not enough time to, oh, there is enough time to kill it before it burrows. And here with the Observer, Terran should release the push, go back home, no more pressure. <laughs> and here we are, four factory. Now remember guys, that observer Please. had to stay back here and clean up those mines. Yeah. He doesn't know what's happening back at home here for Terran. Now a four factory push is one of the most explosive two base pushes you can have here. And this should sync up, I believe, with a plus one attack. Yeah, it's really fast, it's really strong. Uh, I'm, I'm liking it quite a bit here for like, um, he's just, he's, he, the amount of goons that he killed for so cheap. That was such a weird build, by the way. I, I got to just throw that out there one more time. But the Terran build or the Protoss build? The Terran build. build. The, the Protoss build is normal. The, the Terran build was very, very strange. Look at this, he actually pushed that Observer out with the Goliath. Yeah, but I, th I think he should know due to where those factories are that that's Maybe, a poor yeah, factory push. Yeah. Because you know that there, you right. had to find factories with an add-on, right? All players tend to build either gateways or factories right at the top of that. <laughs> yeah. So we'll see. I mean, with Reavers, you can definitely slow the push down. Okay, so he sneaks back in here. Now he'll have confirmation, but honestly, seconds become minutes for the Protoss until they, if they don't find out what's happening in time. We saw Snow, the game he ran, the uh, Observer into the turret and had no idea what Flash was doing. <laughs> it's literally it's happened. at the high level of play, like the worst thing that can happen to you is you just have no idea what Terran's cooking back at home. Well, every now and then a build like this gets mixed in and it's really dangerous. Obviously, Rain knows what's happening. He has got to slow this down. Couple things to remember here. A tank out was reduced slightly. Now, I think it was worth it because he actually came in there and interrupted the mining, but. Oh yeah, no, that was great yeah. for Terran, for sure. But, Dragoon, Zealot, uh, and Reaver can fight and they can pick off enough tanks. It can happen, especially with Rain uh, at the wheel here. I love, by the way, that pylon put over there. That was just an attempt in case Terran tried to get crazy and expand again. You'll see this, this is a very uh, technical move here, but they'll put a pylon at the third because Terran have to get something besides a vulture there to kill it. And that's when the Protoss comes in there and pounces on that location. Yeah, it's definitely a nice move. I love this though, the, the turret setup. This is just going to make it very clean to leave that bridge area. Right. Because coming over the bridge is the hardest part of attacking out into the map as Terran on this map. Uh, but just having that single turret there makes it so that Protoss can't even go near it. Uh, I think we have a Vulture run by the natural. Yeah, we do. Uh, oh, okay. this gets everything out of position. This is when light moves. Yeah, I think you're probably right. 100%. Well, we say that. I don't even know if tanks have unseats back at home. Come on. Let's see it. Let's By see the, the blue way, stuff coming down. Not very many probes, I don't think, here no. for uh, for Rain. He might have actually cut probes slightly in the hopes to preempt the push. Yeah. Light literally has more supply right now. I promise you that was the time to move. He took a little bit, but here he goes, going across. Now, oh, my God, he down. got shuttle speed with this as well. He's completely yeah. relying on the two-base uh, yeah. Protoss army to beat the two-base Terran army. And I think the problem is, is that, oh, wait a minute. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, he was he yeah. was looking to it force would have the been units back. Unwise to try to thread the needle there. <laughs> yeah. Um, he's looking for a, 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 the opportunity to drop here, but this is like perfect turret placement. And so because he can't kill any SCVs, he has to go back and lean in harder on dragoons and zealots. What is at the bottom 
uh, at six o'clock or toast. Is that a, a mine or something? Uh, he does have a couple mines there, but yeah, it's, okay, it's so this rain is... wanting to expand but unable to. Yeah. And he could just play it. This some looks here. so good for light right now. Oh, He's yeah. got so much production. As long as he takes this slow, because it's not like there's some tech that Rain is building to right now. Right now, yeah. ah! Rain is just hoping to be able to break the push. If he can kill the whole army, uh, he'll be in good shape. But killing this army, look at that. He's got four Goliaths in here. How is that shuttle going to do anything? See? Oh, my just God. Dead. Okay, uh, Light is going to take this game. So GG. Sick. And wow. By the way, guys, that that was a butterfly effect game. Yes. Had he not attacked in with those two Dragoons yes. and failed to assassinate the tank while taking so much damage from the Dragoons, the counterplay from Light wouldn't have happened, and maybe we would yeah. have an entirely different result. Actually, I know we would have had at least an entirely different game, but yeah. Light made every correct decision based off one tiny little error yeah from, from rain well you know when you're trying to run past a bunker when you're trying to do things like snipe tanks that is so dangerous yeah, that's the best cheerful word right there um it, it's just truly it's like it's not supposed to work we're sitting here playing in turn rate 24 you know uh but that was just some amazing beautiful play coming out of uh coming out of light there just countered everything really well the build order was very bizarre, but worked out amazingly well. I have to relook at that game. Yeah, the, the way he just set up so well. I even like when he had the Goliath in, in a good spot there. Okay, so this like was Expo the FD. Yeah, look at this. He's actually in the natural at 530 with four Marines, two tanks, and vultures rallied. Yeah. What a strange build. For just a split second, he misclicks and actually targets the uh, Nexus there. Now, every moment here is so important because uh, that one tank in the upper left was not killed off right away. And so you see he just pulls away for just enough time. But look at this one Dragoon. It's one Vulture shot. Watch. Boop. Takes it out. <laughs> Boop. And that then was, that happened. Now, that was when you know you could go for a fact. You yeah, killed so many units. Yeah. And again, the lost mining time between not having a natural and this, this push was just way too strong. It's like, what are you going to do, Protoss? He types in GG before that Scarab even explodes. We are going to a break, guys. When we come back, game number six here in the KSL Finals. Welcome back to KSL. This is a command center. With a marine and a man. You can tell because here are its nipples. <laughs> <laughs> These are actually detachable, I think. Yeah. Is that a, it's an SCV or is, is that this a like a hand warmer? Yeah, yeah. That's what it is, is a hand warmer? I got another one over here. I wish I had one of these. Now, this is to size, to scale, to what the marine is like. Wow. Whoops. What it has to fight. I would wear this instead of mittens Oops, this winter if I had one of these. Yeah, and I can do it with this too. The Ultraless. It stops me from hurting myself when I cast the games and I get too excited. I go, whoa. Yeah. Well, it gives you like five carapace right off the bat. That's so. right. I like these plushies. If you didn't see the last one, there it is. Get those Zerg ones out of here. Dead I know, race. This race. Garbage. Garb. Now, this. Might be what it comes down to here for Rain. Maybe. He has actually lost a couple of Reavers. It's not going to be this. I promise no, you that. Was that an SCB? No, or? this is a Medic. Oh, OK, so this is a Marine. Yeah. All right, we got to the bottom of that Marines one. Marines are important. Um, they're important early game, but they're not as good late game because of this unit. Uh, we're going to go We're going to go right into game? What are we doing? Uh, next map is Neo Sylphid. I'm not sure if we're going to do highlights or anything like that. And uh, from here. It's going to be really down to whether or not Rain can pull it together in the series. I mean, Light has the lead. He's on match point, my friend, and I don't mean map number one. Nice. Right. I did not expect Light to take a lead in this. 
No. I, I'm so surprised. And again, that entire game, ooh, good cheerful there. Oh, and it gets the best oh, one from Canada. Oh, there are storms. That's, that is true. Rain comes out of clouds during storm time. They also come out of rains, Templars, in late game PVT, especially Where there with is light, there are no storms. Because there's no clouds. Whoa, nice. Now, we're gonna get a few more shots of Cheerfuls, but then, then we have to go on to Neo Sylphid. Okay, so Neo Sylphid, I mean, it, it has a winning record in PVT, but I will bring it around the other way and say, so I think it's a pretty good map for Terran, so. It has been 13 years since the finals for Light. He is one win away from taking this. Rain, on the other hand, the most dominant player in the last two years of StarCraft One. He just needs to win this game and the next, and he'll be the KSL champion. Again, this is the last day of official StarCraft matches for the entire year of 2019. And then we all go into hibernation. And then we wait and come up <laughs> later on. Yeah. And we check if we see our shadows and if it scares us and we go back in mm -hmm. or if we continue on with more StarCraft. Yes. Well, um, I, I hope we don't see our shadows. I know. Well, we'll have more StarCraft. So, Rain versus Light. Again, guys, game five. Can Light close us out and cause the upset or is Rain going to even things out and bring us to game seven? A lot of cheers for each of the players in the audience there. So in the top, we have Rain. Ooh, see, he was right. Mm -hmm. And in the left, we have Light. No, that's Rain again, I think. <laughs> no, he has two bases. Oh, no, you were right. OK, my bad. I guess that makes sense. If one guy's that guy, the other guy has to be Is the problem? other guy. Ooh, it's me, Rain, with, uh, that was the Nightmare Before Christmas font we saw back there. <laughs> yeah, so, these spots, better for light than rain. Back of the main of uh, rain is shown to light, rather than vice versa. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I feel like this, I don't know, I'm just, I'm feeling light right now. He's just been yeah. playing some magnificent StarCraft. He's I, really on point. The last game really impressed me, man. Yeah. I mean, he really was just on top. He nailed it. Of uh, every moment, every second of that game. Yeah, and the amount of bases he took during the push, that is probably the hardest thing to do macro-wise. In the last it's, game. Yeah, in the Eddie game, right? No, I was talking about the the, the most recent one we just had, where uh, the two oh, dragoons died. Oh, the spirit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that was that was good. He he punished he punished him real hard there for sure. Uh, but well, the Eddie game I think is for me the one where I'm like, oh okay, lights on a different level now. Like the fact that he took four bases during that push. That's like what you see Flash do, where you're like, oh my god, how does anyone ever win against this? This is so crazy. So Light is just, he's playing awesome. Now this map, Sylphid, uh, as long as you don't die early on, you can get a lot of bases as Terran. You can kind of get up to five bases. Yeah, that's Maybe very true. Maybe we should call it four and a half, because that little, that little, the, the, mineral the base only? that makes a triangle base. Well, actually, oh, you the mean the one in the better. closer to the actual middle, excuse me. Yeah, the ones in the middle have reduced minerals and gas, so they're like, it's kind of a little bit more than a half base, I guess. But yeah, you, anyways, you get so many bases, you can really get your macro flowing on this map. And Light has shown us he's very strong in that situation. Now, let's also point out that um, that last game, the smallest error caused a butterfly effect game where everything from that moment stemmed from there. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe we'd have, we would have had a game where Rain could have won. Those positions can be pretty strong for Protoss against Terran. Yeah. But Rain, I think, pulled the trigger a little bit too soon by actually trying to just kill the tank. I, I mean, you don't have to kill the tank nope. uh, in these builds. If you can kill it, that's great. 
uh, and it definitely makes Taron uh, get on their knees, so to speak, uh, in the early game. But honestly, <laughs> I, I would say um, that play there, that little small decision was a little bit surprising from Rain. Yeah. Two Dragoons uh, trying to confidently gun down a tank with only two Dragoons yeah. with a bunker there. Kind of crazy. I think it's... we're going to see more conservative, at least engagement play here from Rain. I think. Kind of have to get lucky to get it in that situation. I mean, if you get it, it's really strong, but I mean, you're not supposed to get it is the big thing. It's it's always a mistake from Terran if you do end up getting it. So we'll see what Light wants to do here. Oh, this was a gases expand, wasn't it? I wasn't really keeping my eye out. But yeah, it looks like it was a gases expand from Light again. And so um, Protoss is going to be expanding just a little bit later here than Light. Looking for any sort of proxies, possible proxy robo, anything like that. You can see where his SCV is scouting right now. Two of them, in fact, out on the map. Oh, what's that out in the middle of the map? Factory. Let's get our history books out, guys. Let's not forget that Flash defeated Rain. And by the way, Rain's been following the same patterns in the series that he has in other series. Flash defeated Rain with a similar, actually I shouldn't even say similar, the same technique. Um, so we know that Rain likes to apply pressure and we see one of the reasons why he likes to do that because uh, he likes to snipe that tank at the entrance. Now the problem is, is that if a vulture is made in a factory that's not contained to the natural or the main of the Terran, well that vulture can avoid all contact with the Dragoons for almost the entire game. Oh, oh my, my god. god, and double trouble if he spots that Citadel. I don't think he will. It's more normal to loop through. He doesn't see it. But let's go back to the main idea here. The Vulture runs around and just plants some mines in uh, the natural in the main here of Rain. I don't know what uh, Rain's going to do because he, he can walk back home and uh, also he can end up walking through the mines as he retreats back home. There's no robo out yet. And this is a very quick DT drop, by the way. Rain yeah. really going for... Very modern play here. It's a... Uh, modern meta play, I should say. Yeah, this, well, this is something that is very deadly and could end up killing him. But, of course, just the fact that he's going to have vultures out in the map is something... Oh, my God. If he scouts... If he goes down and sees that... Okay, he sees a robo. Does he... Is he going to go down and see it? He might not, dude. This he happened. saw that there was a pile in there before. But, but a lot of times you try to check the upper right. There's and things go back. missing, though. There's things missing. Like, I, he should know that. Well, he's not going to do it, it looks like. Yeah. By the way, the tank was almost sniped, by the way. We didn't have a shot of it on camera. Now, there's two vultures. I'm sorry, actually three out now. And certainly he should have mines. Uh, throwing down a turret, so that's at least... Oh, 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 you got to repair! Oh, oh, he got vault. He nice. got speed. Yeah, speed instead of mines. The speed vultures come in. They're going to dive into the main. This will not curb the uh, DT production and the shuttle production, by the way. That's already started. But one Dragoon to clean this up. In theory, you could, depending on how quick you are. Uh, at the same time, Rain is taking some damage on these Dragoons back at home. Both vultures still alive, still killing probes. One vulture now. He doesn't see the tech. It's actually oh, insane that we have I think he just saw it. I think he just saw it with that vulture. So if he's... I mean, he saw the Robo as well, so he should be able to put this all together. Wow, he's killing a lot of probes right now. This is big for light. This is a real balancing act on all sides to make sure that you're both defending and attacking at the same time. A slip up on either end could cost you the game. Fortunately for light, he's kept his tank alive outside that bunker. Oh my God. Where's the shuttle? I think he skipped it for now because he's lower. No, I guess it's actually, it's about to go I'm into the main base. I'm just not seeing it. I just don't I know where it is. I think it's going to the main base right now. Ah! Okay, oh my god, out. this is too many mines! That is a lot of mines right now. Getting some serious damage on, but let's see what this DT drop does. Where? The oh my god, there it is. might be able to he keep it get, in this game. He the, the, uh, the, the uh, SCV making the academy. That would be huge. Forgot what that unit was called. He could get that and actually stop this game. He's gonna come up here. He might, no, he will not try to go into the main or try to kill that turret. The tanks still very present here, but Rain's multitasking, but getting to flounder mm -hmm. as he's trying to defend so much back at home. He's not gone and killed off this turret just yet. Oh, that's a huge kill right there. No units in the main base to help clean up. He does have a turret though, and he can build his defense around that. 
Oh my god, how is that? Is that really just exactly the range of a turret's vision? That's yeah, I so guess insane. It is. I that did not look right, but no, nope, doesn't I cannot work. disagree with the coding of the game. Um, <laughs> And now because of the one turret, he's able to push with the second one to try to reclaim his main. Both these players black-eyed here yeah. uh, in this game as nobody has come out without a lot of bruises, a lot of scars. This is crazy right now. He is turret pushing down, so he'll retake his main. But look at the damage, right? He's losing, he had to cancel his academy. He's losing a ton of depots here, but he killed so many probes before. Yeah, getting these depots is so annoying here because it's hard to really push in here with mines and reclaim them. And that's, is, I think he might even get this bottom one here, which is No huge. units are being made. No SCVs are being made, right? I mean, yeah. it is oh, a that's giant a good point. deal. I it, was thinking it, about the army artosis. You're totally right. Yeah, he can't make any more SCVs yeah. right now. Yeah, so his economy Protoss is not like he wants it. And dude, this is so sick. Into Reaver. Yeah. The madman. Yeah. Because he's trying to push and down with the mines. Oh my god! Here's what's additionally cool about this, by the way, yeah. is that uh, he can pick up these DTs later with a shuttle when the drop <laughs> comes in. Yeah. That yeah. would be hilarious if he actually saves this little guy. My so, god. So yeah, this is, it was looking so unbelievably good for like, he even killed some of those Dragoons we couldn't even comment on because so many things were occurring. Okay, the shuttle. Oh, I don't know about this. Oh, uh, I. Oh, please get us the real shot that matters. Okay, thank you. <laughs> He's like, but wait, a probe might get killed. It's like, dude, you're going to give me heart yeah. problems. Yeah, I don't know what that what that shuttle's thinking about right now, but it's not going to get anything done. This so, is... He sees the Nexus over here. Um, this will be reclaimed if, if Observer Tech's here, and I have to imagine it is in the game. And Terran is interested in expanding pretty safely, by the way. Wait a minute. Was that shuttle actually empty? Yeah, I think it might have been. He just flew it out there to kind of psych him out. Not 100% sure, but yeah, it, it definitely could have been. Okay, so two uh, two DTs still out there. Look at that. He waits for the tank to leave, goes back after the depot. So much patience. Well, I guess that's about as good as you're going to get. Look at this guy. Yeah, now he's going to rotate over and get it. So the one-two punch. Okay. Rain is certainly getting as much done as he can. <laughs> I have to say, for the insanity of the early part of this game, where yeah. most, even pro gamers would have died, oh my god, if he can actually drop the command center, that is so crazy. Look at this. What am I even seeing? Okay, he cleans that DT. No, I think that he, the Reaver has to leave the main Yeah, now. he needs to respect the fact that that, uh, <laughs> The number of tanks is high enough. You can't even drop a Reaver out without it yeah. being just shot down before the Scarab can fire. Okay, right. not bad yeah. by Light. I like the idea, but Rain's defense is is really good. Talk about a nail biter of a game. I mean, Light knows if he if he wins this game, he wins it mm -hmm. all out, and he got himself into a positional advantage. But Rain powered through with the tech that he had and really fought back well with those DTs. Yeah, yeah. A really Imagine dramatic it, game. Yeah, if he had not gotten that DT drop off, this game would have already been over. We'd have a champion. But right now, I mean, this is still anyone's game. Look at this. Oh Look at this. Oh, the shuttle. Oh the Wraith God, is going to be able to shoot. hit this. Kendra Goon's coming here and save the day. Wow, good instinct. He knows there's going to be huh. Dragoons out on the map. I almost feel like he should have dived on that. I think he might have gotten it. I'm not so sure. It's a hard call. You can see he's playing with, uh, you know, that that kind of mentality right now, where he's not taking some of these risks in this situation. I yeah. think he's pretty content to just defend right now and macro up. More gateways are coming down now. Oh, this again. We've that talked about this often. before. It happens more often than you think. Early DT play because you eventually, as the game turns into a macro game, you make a citadel to get zealot uh, leg speed. We have a couple situations in each of the matchups where you'll see that one of these structures made a second time in a yeah. row because these guys are hardwired to follow a certain algorithm. I think it happens with the Citadel more than maybe anything else. I think so, because Protoss get into these unusual techs and try to transition into a normal game. And one thing is you can never forget the Citadel because it's one of the most central things that allows yeah. you to catapult yourself into late game. By the way, that shuttle does survive, <laughs> but he's going to have to let that thing get some more shields. Maybe even get shuttle speed, I don't know, if he's going to use that any further. Oh, he canceled it. Good save. Okay, Stargate coming up right now. I think probably he's going to go into Arbiter Tech. Yeah, yeah I think 100%. Gates. 
Seems like he definitely has to. I'm here. getting a little bit worried for Light here. I feel like Light stabilized, but Rain has outpaced him. He might have, especially when I look at that factory placement. Ooh. Like, this is actually, it sounds weird, but if you look at his factory placement, does he have enough room to fit like nine factories this in this that is base a really important in the same thing. screen? This is so important what you're mentioning. The same thing can happen to Protoss if they're very sloppy with their yeah, pylons yeah. all over the place where you don't actually have enough room for just more gateways. Yeah. The thing is, it's more important to get your factories up than make sure they're in a perfect uh, location. And it's been kind of a crazy game. So I understand how and why this can occur, but it's he's going to have a harder time macroing. Like, you want as many buildings on one screen as possible, and you want everything else to be so close by so that you can very quickly do your rounds. Here, I don't know where he's going to be able to fit them. It's going to be across at least two full screens, I would say. In the late game of StarCraft, um, macro has become so important. We're seeing this here with See the that? gateways. <laughs> you need to be able to vomit out a huge army very quickly. <laughs> vomit out. You can be both playing perfectly, and then you don't make four factories or four more gateways yeah. and just get overpowered. Absolutely. You, I mean, we saw, again, that Eddie game that was so impressive. He went to nine factories really quickly. He had like seven or eight on one screen, <laughs> you know? And yep. that's like, you will macro that very, very quickly. So Rain is about to get maxed out here. Terran is beginning to set up to uh, relocate the, uh, the def defending army here of Rain uh, with his drop. But there's a forge here. And actually, look at the placement. You can't really run vultures into this base. I no. just noticed that. Yeah, it's, it's a StarCraft II building position in Artosis. <laughs> yeah, well, he's an old StarCraft II pro gamer. All right, so, I mean, still a good drop. Definitely a good drop there. Looks like Rain walking around towards the space. Oh, is he, just gonna, is he just going to barbarian his way in here? I don't think it's a good idea. I, don't, I think this is one of the only ways he could lose the game. Okay. This, uh, yeah, I don't know about this one. I just, well. Let's see. I. There are enough vultures. Well, maybe not, actually. No, I don't think so. No. Well, okay, so. Uh, yeah, it, he, I, I don't think that was actually worth it for Rain. Maybe, well, you, maybe you know, he feels like it was. A couple factors here. One is that, as you were saying, Artosis, Terran can get other bases up fairly easily. Yeah. So um, even though that base is going to mine out, I think it's still a mistake. Well, he's going he's gonna to get that mineral base up right now. You see he is taking that at the moment. Look at this. This is a great move. Without those vultures running around and blocking the ramp. Oh, my God. Amazing. Yeah, this is really intelligent because it's actually hard for Protoss to get their army there if they don't have something to spot. And he's just going to pick up those vultures and drop them over there. Moves like that are so big right now. And now this base isn't being mined from. And again, why did Rain try to, uh, I don't know, Hulk smash his way through the third base for Terran when he was maxed out, he probably could have set up for a good recall and had a cleaner victory. I mean, a lot of times when you have many skirmishes in the early game, by the way, Rain is A class here for just taking this out. He'll be able to remine here immediately. Yeah, and he didn't lose that many probes, so right. uh, not as effective from light as maybe it could have been. Like, continue to macro there. Look, the supplies are getting a lot closer right now. Rain still has not remaxed after that attack into the third. Sending probes down here to the bottom. This is actually a dicey move. It's really hard to get units to the space down here in the bottom right with vultures on the map. EMP is being upgraded. Do we actually have an Arbiter out? Oh, of course we do. I'm sorry. <laughs> Guys, I'm sorry. I got to go. Okay, let's see what he can get done here. Laying a few mines here and there. Ooh, nice pullback on the probes. Jeez, man. Good defense from Rain. Yeah, he's got that mineral base up. We he need has the option to take another. I feel like from here you want to max out, though. It's really, really important. I think you need to max out and, and look for the recall. I really want to see the main base layout of light right now and what that looks like factory-wise. How many factories does he have? He has to have at least eight right now. Wow, a fairly naked natural expansion there. And Terran's beginning to grow into the upper left in a location... Uh, and also the way the, the pattern in which Terran's expanding, and it doesn't seem like it's really easy to stop that, right? I mean, the tanks are well positioned, but Rain goes for the weakness uh, this time around instead of the strong spot, even though it's the same location he's attacking into again. There's much less tanks over here. Mm -hmm. Now, even though there's less tanks, it seems like the rest of these tanks are going to come down here. A stasis over there, but yeah, the position of the so. vultures. Yeah, 
Well, he's running so many uh, units up through these little tiny choke points. Yeah. And I just, I don't see what he's getting done here. Protoss want to take big fights in open areas, not tiny bottlenecks, especially with a defensive matrix like that. This may be the fight that actually costs Rain the game and ultimately then costs him the series. Yeah, I mean, that's the second time he did that, and he's dropping from max supplies, losing, you know, so much, so many units falling. Light wants these trades. He really does. It's taken him a little bit to max out, but his upgrades continue to flow. So, uh, I, I just don't know that Rain can recover. When, when Terran gets to five bases, you basically can't have a bad fight like what we saw back there. It, that's like the dream. You better have a really big bank if you're going to, that's for sure. And he does not have that. He's going to again try to attack down here. I don't think he'll commit there ever no, again. No, I don't think so. I think he's starting to learn his lesson. And and here's where the Terran army begins to try to catch and hunt Gosh. the Protoss's army. Yeah, it's on 2-2. Two, two. I'm sure that plus three is on the way. I can only imagine an EMP on the two Arbiters would end up with Protoss having absolutely no options here. Yeah. In fact, there's even a vessel for each Arbiter. If he can get an EMP off. Plus like three the Arbiters attack. are the only good thing about Rain's army right now. Plus three attack, plus two armor. Um, yeah, trying is, to push it back. Out of all the moments in the game, late game I should say, that, that, that Protoss fear, it's when the plus three attack, plus two armor is finished. Because siege tanks just take way too long to die for you to be able to hold your ground and sustain your army. Another Nexus is being made. I mean, Rain's macro is incredible, but I think that Light has outpaced him. He should win this game with just superior numbers. Also, it's not as difficult on on this map as it is on others for the Terran to comb the map and basically isolate the Protoss army and then yeah. uh, move in for the killing move. And he's doing that right now. Okay, one EMP on that Arbiter. We got one left. And again, I think even with a stasis on almost every single tank, I think the reinforcements come in here. Yeah, even the best stasis might not oh do it Oh my god, oh and that was god. actually among the worst recalls you could have. And as this attack comes in, the amount of splash damage that's being dealt is just so insane. This could be just about it. The Zealots are almost scan. gone. A little bit of a late scan, Rain doing a little bit more damage, yeah. but ultimately it's just Dragoons against so many tanks. And we know that with the next wave coming in, GG, Light pushes through and he did it. And wow, look at that. You can see how happy he is. Well, this guy has been a pro gamer for 13 years and he has not won a championship. He's never even been to a finals. Here he is, the champion of KSL season four. Unreal. And Rain, look, I, I think it was with about everybody else here. He was supposed to win this, but Light played better, frankly made better decisions, whether it was technical, technical decisions in the long run, like what we saw in this most recent game, or split second decisions like we saw uh, in the game where Reign's two Dragoons were damaged and Light followed the exact perfect strategy, build, and tactics to win it. Yeah, he really came very well prepared today. He was so crisp in all of his timings, in all of his build orders, in all of his reactions, his macro, was really unequal. Uh, amazing play here tonight from Rain and a very well-deserved victory. I have no idea what he's still doing in that booth. I need to see him get out of there. Let's see him cry those tears of sorrow, Rain. Well, I mean, talk about a journey that's come to an incredible, incredible ending here. Oh, not so fast. You gotta wait until it's no, safe. No, no, go, you were right. What if those smoke blasts hurt his hands? All right, he made it. And now he gets to have what I think is the nicest looking trophy we've ever had in a tournament. It's pretty beautiful. Big cheers here, an emotional moment. It goes to show you never give up on your dreams. Keep working hard. It will eventually pay off. Uh, they're cheering wow. for his name. He's trying. He's never had a ceremony like this. Do I grab it? Do I raise it? Ah, he raises it. Wow. Can Dang. we get the smoke shots going? Tell you what, he has a lot of empty shelves behind him on his stream. That's no right. more tasteless. Get no the shelf ready. More. All right, let's see if we're gonna get the translation here. Six years old, now. Seventeen years. What an incredible moment. Ah, 일단 너무 기분이 좋네요. 오늘 정말 꿈에 구리던 우승을 처음 해봐서 정말. I feel it's so good, it's like a dream come true. 
뭐그런생각도없었고 그 부담을 겪, 뭐, 견뎌내면서부터도 he started your career is always smiling, not expecting much. And since you've trained more and more, it seemed to become more of a burden that you hadn't won a tournament. Yeah, there was many unexpected moments on this journey. I was stressed about that. I wanted to do my best. I finally got my chance. I was wondering if the Usain Cup would be able to see Lee Jae-ho again and see the tears again. But today, it's a different scene. I was wondering if he would cry once more now that you managed to win the finals. If there are more finals in the next round, I'll give it to you. I'll save that for my cry for the next championship. 저희 마지막에 그런 얘기를 했습니다. 김정민의 선련이 사실 이 경기가 이제 단발로 끝나는 것이 아니라 이제 이재호의 시대가 열려도 이상하지 않을 정도의 임팩트를 보여준 경기다. 이런 얘기를 했어요. 그만큼 이번 결승전까지 올라온 데 있어서 굉장히 많은 것들을 보여주면서 결승전에 올라왔거든요. 특히나 마지막 상대가 프로토스 그리고 그 프로토스라는 단어가 이재호 선수의 13년을 얼마나 괴롭힌지를 잘 알고 있는 계신 분들이 여기 앉아 계셔서 더더욱 더 좀. 어려움 속 경기를 펼쳤을 것 같은데 어떻습니까 준비하는데? 일단 그제 예전부터 별명이 포마이라는 별명이었어. 그게 불치병이라고 했거든요. 네. 그게 아니라는 걸 증명한 게 증명한 것 같아서 그 점이 너무 기분이 좋은 것 같아요. 난치병이지만 극복 가능한 병이었다. 13년만에 보여줬군요. 아 오늘 뭐 영상을 통해서뿐만 아니라 오늘 현장에도 진짜 많은 분들이 이재호 선수의 플레이 하나에 굉장히 감탄하시면서 응원을 계속 끝까지 보내주셨습니다. 저절로. So many people came down to the studio today to see you play, and you performed so well. 최근에 제가 느꼈었던 결승전 가운데서도 가장 좀 감동 깊은 그런 순간인 것 같은데 함께 신 모은의 심판 여러분께 한 말씀 해주신다면요. Anything you want to say to them? 정말 제가 이제 결승까지 오는 것도 꿈 같은데 우승까지 하게 돼서 너무 기분이 좋고요. 예전부터 약간 좀 I feel like again, like I'm dreaming. I'm just so happy that I won the series. 강했었거든요, 제가. I was always like a supporting cast member in tournaments, in a sense. And now I've become the hero of this story. I hope to become a hero again. Any comments for the people that helped you? A lot of pro players helped me a lot. 변현재, 송병구, 장윤철, 김승민, 모든 역사 선수들하고 계속 칠전제를 해봤거든요. 그러면서 all those pro dos players thank you. 많이 성장했던 것 같고 특히나 또 이영호 선수의 플레이를 좀 많이 보면서 배웠어요. We did best of seven practices specifically. 것 같네요. 이유인 것 같네요. And I think that's the reason why I was able to overcome the difficulty of a long series like this. Yes, I heard a lot of the people who were singing at the end of the day. You were the first time to hear the first time. I think it's good to hear your thoughts about it. First of all, thank you so much for coming to the end of the day. Oh, any comments? Sorry. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Especially the fans who cheered for me. Thank you guys so much. 네, 아 오랫동안 기다리신 팬 여러분들이 이에 이 무대가 더 값지지 않나라는 생각이 듭니다. 이제 그 값진 무대 여러분들과 함께 공유하는 시간 저희가 이제 시상식을 이제 준비를 하도록 하겠습니다. 이 트로피 이제 완전히 드려야 되니까 그럼 이재호 선수 잠시 아래쪽에 대기해 주시고요. 바로 시상식을 저희는 진행을 해 보도록 하겠습니다. All right, it's time for the award ceremony now. Do we have? 네. Oh, this is award ceremony music. It's got kind of a little piano playing, but it's not too much. It's kind of like, here we go, award ceremony. Now, if you've watched us do award ceremonies before, a couple things to note. First of all, trophy, obviously, okay? Calm down, I know that you knew that at home, all right? Now, second part, big check. Do we, do we have the big checks here? Do we have the big check? I don't know. And do we have the flowers? Now, the big check of the flowers, not as important. The trophy, you have to give them that because it's a championship. 
Or what does Sanga Place get? Uh, just a big check, perhaps. Maybe uh, a big check that's voided out. It's from a date like 2012. Like, oh, sir, we can't, we can't cash this. Okay, so I'm assuming we're doing second place first. See, you guys, I've done a lot of tournaments. There it is, a big check. All right. But not this one. Rain with another go, Rain. super deep finish. Yeah, continues Don't to be the best Protoss. Keep your eye out one. for this guy. He still is so accomplished. I mean, it's insane. Yeah. Oh, now he gets flowers, so that means that the winner has to get flowers. That's right. about 10 grand. Yeah, it's one. Rain continues to just fill out his legacy. It's so crazy. Absolutely. All of his high finishes. Every KSL, he's been top four minimum. And now, we are going to do the winner. And this is what a, what a beautiful thing to have Light be the champion here. This is such an interesting story that we've had here. We were talking about how cool it would be if he won, but then he actually did it. Think about this for a second. He's been a legitimate pro gamer for more than 13 years. Yeah, over a decade. And he's played near the very top level for that long, and this yeah. is his first championship. Wow. In the hardest game on earth. Yeah. I mean, I think it, it, the amount of skill he has is like 10 times that of champions in many of the other things that we call esports. And, and here time. he is with his first championship. It's so touching. He never gave up. He has been grinding, he has been practicing, he's been trying so hard amongst some of the most talented players of games ever, and here he is, the champion. It's a wonderful moment. Congratulations to Light. Here he goes, well winning the trophy. Well deserved. Yeah, no, see, he's new, to, he's new to holding trophies. See, that was a pro move. He put the flowers yeah. and the check down. Sometimes they hold all three, but this guy's already new meta for trophy holding. Yeah. Still, he, he has the Blizzard guy hold the, the, the check, and the tr that's how you do it, and the flowers, too. This is a dedicated trophy hold, is what we She's call like, it. She's like, give me that. It's time for him to do the final shot where he kisses the trophy. And then they become married and have a baby. Wow. Wow. <laughs> it took me a minute to register what you said. Yeah. Okay, this was this was an awesome tournament, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, it's just so great to have Light as a champion now. I feel like yes. this is a new beginning for him. He's shown himself that he can do it against the stiffest competition there is. Rain, there's no one scarier than Rain to face in the finals no. in KSL. Wow. And defeating the previous champion. Uh, I think in a second here, we're going to get a shot of the players. Guys, thank you so or the player, I should say, the champion. Guys, thank you so much for joining us. We love you guys. We will see you next year. Bye-bye. Um,